2023 at 6.30 p.m. to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Is anybody audio or video recording in the audience? Uh, yes, I uh, recorded and we posted on uh, Grade 8 for our friends. We posted the Department of Community Outside the Department. Thank you. Selectman comments. Selectman LaPointe. Just a thank you. Um, to everybody for their patience and understanding and condolences um, while I was out of town attending to my family and for the beautiful arrangement you sent. Thank you. Selectman Anderson? None at this time. Selectman Salter? None at this time, thank you. Okay, I have a couple just reminders that the special town election is January 19th and that's a, is that a week from this Thursday? And that's going to be on the fire station improvement ballot vote. It'll be at Old Murdoch Senior Center from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So you might want to get out and vote on that one way or the other. The other thing I want to remind folks about, you can now get your nomination papers if you want to run for office for the annual town election to be held on May 1st, 2023. There's one three-year term for Board of Selectmen available, two three-year terms for the school committee, two three-year terms for Board of Health, and one five-year term for Housing Authority. All you need are 35 registered voters to sign your nomination papers and you can run for office. We really need folks out there who have the time to devote, to come forward and run for these offices. It's really important. Public comments and announcements. Mr. Lucia. And we're asking everybody to keep their comments to about three minutes, okay? Okay, well, I have a couple different subjects. Okay. Um, the first one is comments. You always have comments at the beginning. Now, I watched your last meeting two weeks ago and there was some issues on there that I would have liked to have spoken to at that time, but you always have comments first. It doesn't give the general public a chance to speak about these comments when they are occurring. Case in point, the special uh, municipal employee. Well, I would have loved to have been at the meeting and maybe conveyed some thoughts at that time that I don't think that this is a very good idea I think you are bordering on a very sensitive area and very gray area because these people are employees. And at the same time, they're being appointed by the town manager, which kind of shows a little impropriety because I wouldn't want to be that employee put on a board and then kind of with the, you know, look that you better follow the town manager's ways of voting or your job could be in jeopardy. We haven't had to use this provision for all these years. There's no reason to dig it up now and to use it. People can use it, and as it's been said, people can recuse themselves if they should. There are other instances where members on this board should be recusing themselves from other things that they continue to vote on because they may be a pet project of theirs, they may be gaining something financially from it, and it's, it's just not right. So then to take a, a town employee and put them into that position is not right. It, it looks as though, you know, just an appearance from behind, that somebody's trying to stack the deck for what they need. And that's not the way this government is supposed to be run. I'll end that one right there. Uh, the other thing is um, the amphitheater. You got a grand opening coming and I know that there is a sprinkler system that has been put in place up there to keep the grass all nice and you know, intact and make sure it doesn't die. But who's gonna pay for the water there? And in addition to paying for the water, who's gonna do all the maintenance? 
and are they gonna follow the water ban like the rest of the town has to follow on May 1st? Will they still be allowed to go and water this grass that's gonna be used maybe twice a month, but it's gonna to have to be cared for each and every week. And with cement near it, there's gonna be heat, and there's gonna be a chance that that grass is gonna get burned. But if you're gonna put water on it, there somehow should be some place for them to record what water is being used and that not being passed on to the rate users. It's just not right that that occurs as such. The last thing is, this board needs to, I don't know, in a manner of sense, grow a set or something, because uh, some things are being railroaded through this board and nobody wants to take the time to question what's being run through it. People are too concerned about their own agendas and maybe their own little pet projects that they want to see go forward. If you could see some of these meetings from this side when it's broadcast on TV, Sometimes it almost looks like some of the selectmen are wink, wink, I got the idea and move forward. And that's not right. You guys don't see it because you're there. But play some of them back and look at them from a person at home's view and go out into some of the local places and listen to some of the scuttlebutt about what goes on. I'm sure many of you have been, you know, approached by people on the street saying, why is this going on? Why is that going on? Well, you know, there is a little bit of impropriety that is perceived by some in a lot. And that leads to the last thing, which is that's why some people don't want to get on these boards. You got the same people on the boards all the time with the same agendas. You know, if they want a plaque, I'll buy them a plaque. They don't need to push things forward that really aren't necessary in this community, especially in this economic time. I don't care about a CPA at all. You know, to me, it's not, it, it's not a surcharge when it comes quarterly on your tax bill. It's a tax, call it what the heck it is. Don't fluff it up and say it's something different. And don't, you know, Mr. Ward, you don't even own property in the town. You live in a trailer park. You don't pay a tax bill with property taxes. Come on, these, these people are hurting for money. I'm on a fixed income, me and my wife are both on a fixed income. If you think we can just kick out some more money all the time, have at it. I'll, I'll take it on, you can pay it for me. But think about the constituents. Don't think about your own little worlds and what you're living in and what may be going on. There are a lot of people in this town that are having a very hard time. Think about them. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, pardon. Uh, he's just bringing me up to speed about who else might want to speak. Thank you, Mr. Lucia. Uh, who else would like to speak? Please. Henry Diaz, the Chair of the Selectmen. I was kind of hoping I could get you all to sign it for the 2022 year. Um, if you use a symbol as opposed to your name, please write a quote and leave it underneath it. And you have it bounced around the office. There it is the pale white horse I rode in on. <laughs> I got some paperwork in here. Uh, I went to the town manager, oh, sorry. My name is Edward Ford, Jr. I am uh, addressed to 273 Central Street in Winchenden. Um, I am a resident of Winchenden since 1994, 1998, I believe. Uh, I recently went to the town manager to receive a uh, right to use town property permit, being an artist in this town, a uh, class clown as well. Um, I give a lot of advice. <laughs> My biggest gimmick is give me your two cents, give me your thoughts, and uh, sit next to me. And if you choose, you can leave something <laughs> or not. But you know, that is just come to me, I'm your backpack, I'm your friend. I'm gonna give you what I can for advice and then we part ways. Uh, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it annoys you. <laughs> Sometimes it's sad. But in the end, this is my character, my life, and I'm trying to live it. Um, 
I asked for this permit to uh, put on an event, a uh, kind of camping event would be, I would invite people to go camping with me because I spend a lot of time in the woods. I am a woodsman. Um, I don't know if anybody follows uh, Winchington Farms or not, but on there now is the uh, rough draft for th this application. Um, to take people camping in Teal Hill, which is one of the town owned property uh, wildlife reserves, I believe. Uh, this would be like a one week, two week camping trip. I pack everything up and move out. I'm hoping to get a dumpster and outhouse at the entrance of the road for not just me, but for everybody. You know, me and trash, you know, you take it in, you take it out. And if you got some, I'll carry it for a little while. You know, I care. Um, this I'm hoping to pay from my uh, SSD, Social Security. Uh, but as we know, <laughs> I can't make any other money if I don't have the right to perform, okay? Uh, if everything does go good and I get money, I do hope to uh, the amplifier that just went in put a uh, water purifier behind it with a uh, sword and a stone. With a what, I'm sorry? Uh, the amplifier that just got put water in. Water per purifier with a what, I'm sorry? A sword and a stone. Oh. The, the gimmick Thank is you. you walk up, pull the sword from the stone, Lady Guinevere's purifying the pond. If you can pull the sword from the stone, you're the high king of England. Oh, king nobody wants to be king. That's a cast iron crown. You gotta lift your people up here. Nobody's gonna listen to you. Mm, I know Everybody's the legend. Everybody's gonna be behind you, <laughs> making fun of you. Only if I have a Merlin behind me. Right? Magic wands. <laughs> All right, um, so, to, I don't have the actual draft written down because I am in the middle of discussing it with Winchin and Farms, but I am hoping to get it done by February and be camping by like the second week in February. Uh, I do hope to be out of there by May. Um, I do hope to collect herbs while I am there, mosses, fungus, anything I can grab without grabbing everything. Okay, um, you know me, Audrey. You've seen my work. You know, leave. 10, take three. Um, I'm gonna ship these not only to Mount Wachusett's but to colleges all around the world and herbal studies all around the world while well, I'm talking to town residents about herbal medicines and spiritual healing as well as what uh, Miranda at the CAC and I like to call uh, community therapy, which is really just the friend next to you who enjoys helping you. Yeah. Um, So when that is finished and finalized and printed out, I went to the library today. It cost 10 cents to print out paperwork, so I didn't get it. Um, imaginary paperwork, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, do put it on the schedule. If we could just talk about it as like a selectman's meeting, the next one would be great too. Um, apart from that, as you do see, <laughs> I have been kind of uh, horsing around in town lately as a character. <laughs> um, like I did say, this properly legal paperwork, I went and scheduled a meeting for, to get from the town manager, and he literally told me it was imaginary. He did say things like, uh, you have a psychosis about sleeping in sleeping bags after I've been mugged in one. <laughs> he did say things like, that may not be a bear at your town, outside your tent in the middle of the woods. It could be only a skunk. <laughs> I mean, some of these aggravating words to a resident of since 1998 and been bullied in this town for, and trying to cope with it. I'm not gonna lie, I have a lot of friends too, but it's hard to get more friends when bullies hide you in a corner with no financial leg to stand on. Um, as it were, this I'm taking with me because I care about. <laughs> Madam oh, Chair. This is the point. Um, Mr. Ford, are, are you possibly talking about the Fern Glen Conservation Area? Uh, I can go there too. Um, I have been scouting it uh, privately as myself. Um, the right to use town property paperwork, I mean, we could branch it out to be any management area. Provided you guys agree to it. Uh, I just chose Pond Hill, uh, 
Tall Hill as a kind of random starting point. Yeah, I just, I was trying to do some research and I didn't find any Teal Hill yet, but I had found the Fern uh, Glen tall, and I was T -A -L -L -O -W. gonna. Tall oh, okay. I was gonna suggest this Fern Glen is by Mount Grace, you might yes. wanna try. And uh, I definitely wanna check out uh, Old Center has one. Uh, West Street, uh, Rolison West Street has another wildlife management and has flowers there that are very uh, endangered as well. And to collect seeds in the fall would be more proper scheduling. Thank you. Um, any, okay. And I'm sorry, the purpose of us signing the horse? Um, it's just a representation of the year past and the year coming, basically. Hmm. Um, the ball and chain and the tea steep is me. <laughs> <laughs> stuck to your leg because I'm a town resident. And that is one hot pepper seed inside. Okay. Um, if we could get the town clerks to uh, bring hot pepper plants in and decorate the office for a little while, it would be fun. Um, I do have people coming with the hopes of providing time for uh, tax relief payment. But we got to talk more about that later. And okay. so. Uh, but these will be residents that are struggling financially to work off their tax debt as opposed to just get kicked out in the cold and have no financial aid to stand on. Well, you know that we do have a tax uh, senior work yes. program. But okay. you have to be like 60 to do it and, or something like that. And I want to okay. cut it down to people who are financially struggling out of the CIC would be more appropriate. But okay. Discussing with them on what they want to do as a council and me as Winchenden Farms and the Frog Prince will uh, come up later. Mm, thank you. All right. Um, I do hope to fill one of these out for the amplifier when it's done so I could perform there too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ford. <coughs> Pardon me. Any other public comments or announcements this evening? Anyone else wishing to speak? No? Hearing and seeing none? We will move on. Uh, we have no public hearings this evening. Um, appointments and resignations. I'm sorry? Thank you. Yep. Um, as of January 5th, 2023, Board of Selectmen acknowledges the following vacancies. If you are interested in serving on one of these boards, please submit a letter of interest to the Board of Selectmen, 109 Front Street, Department 1, Winchenden, Mass., 01475. Forms can also be found at townofwinchenden.com slash board dash selectmen. We have one vacancy on the communications committee. Uh, they just wrapped up quite a bit of work uh, last fall working on the uh, new contract with Comcast. Uh, Community Preservation Act Exploratory Committee. We still have one citizen vacancy. That committee is still active. Cultural Council, we have 13 vacancies. They provide programs to the community, rich cultural experiences, covering school field trips, after school programs, concerts, festivals, theater, dance, film, etc. We currently have six members and they can have up to 19. A field viewer fence driver, we have one vacancy which is exactly what it says, field driver and fence viewer, making sure that fence laws are um, followed. Master Plan Implementation Committee, there is one vacancy. Um, the work that the Master Plan Committee is doing is ongoing. Uh, it has been, on, has been work going on in the past for some years, and it will continue because that's a, that's a moving target. That's a living document. Uh, open Space Preservation Appraisal, and or survey revolving fund advisory committee, one board of selectmen appointed vacancy. Um, and this has been on there for a while. Um, I am part of it through the Agricultural Commission. Um, so I cannot also be appointed to it um, as a, the board of selectmen um, Member, so if, if anyone of the board would care to fill that position, you know, please just uh, shoot me a quick text or an email. That would be great. Uh, the Recreation Commission, one vacancy. Um, they've gotten, the Recreation Commission does a lot, a lot in town, a lot of different things. 
Um, Zoning Board of Appeals, we have two alternate member vacancies open. Board consists of five regular members and three alternates. So again, if any interest out there or just even more information, would like more inf in about these, you know, please reach out to, um, to the town manager's office. Thank you very much. Uh, next, permit license applications, heal entertainment permit for a taste of Winchenden at the Beals Memorial Library. And we have someone here this evening to speak to that. I don't see anyone, that is okay. Um, we're in 2023, aren't we? Would help if I get into the right folder. Um, looks like there are no concerns from uh, town departments. This would be, I beg your pardon, I'm a little behind the Behind the eight ball, okay. Bills Memorial Library parking lot 12 to, four, 12 to 4 on Saturday, May 13th. Food services, live entertainment. Um, they've done this the last few years and it's been a lot of fun. I just, this is Anderson. Just to pick, uh, in my question w would have been on parking. There is no Beals Memorial parking lot. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's no parking lot <laughs> as such. There is. Where? It's the new parking lot next to the gentry. Is that not the town parking lot? Uh, it's actually parking for one by Beals Memorial Library. Uh, uh, so, so, sure. So w we've gone back and forth on this one a few times. Um, I think the official billing was the shared municipal lot. So, so the Library Board of Trustees did contribute a portion of funds to the cost of the land, um, the remainder of which the town paid for for the land, and then the town entirely funded the construction of the parking lot. So I think there's where some of the confusion is that the library has the exclusive use of the parking lot. Um, but I think for the sake of reference, what you're referencing is the, the multi-purpose municipal lot across from the library. Yeah. Okay, the shared municipal lot across from the library. Hmm. Okay. What'd you call it? Say it again. Shared. Shared municipal lot. We should give it a name. I, that would be doing me a favor. So if you want, <laughs> want to put that on a future <laughs> agenda. Really. Uh, <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to find someone I to did, I did, the name. I did, though, in all honesty, I forgot about that parking lot. And, and it's yeah, a very well attended event. Mm. Um, so parking is sometimes a concern. And that's really where I was going to go at. But then I kind of laughed when I saw Beale's library parking <laughs> lot. It was the location. And it's usually in the, in the grassy area, no? Right. But now it's all fenced off. Because of the construction. Be Will it be done? Okay. By May? Okay, good. Good. Any questions or comments on this application? There are none, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to approve the entertainment permit for the Taste of Winchenden, scheduled for Saturday, May 13th, 2023, from 12 to 4 p.m. as presented this evening. Second. Thank you, Madam Seconded, to approve the request. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Uh, next up, we have a request from the Recreation Department. Uh, regarding the amphitheater grand opening, June 10th, 2023. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> um, the record state your name, please. Sure, uh, Tiffany Newton, I'm the recreation coordinator. Um, first, I wanted to state that the recreation commission actually has two open seats available. I'm sorry, a little bit slower. <laughs> uh, recreation has two open seats available oh. on our committee. Okay. Um, we had a resignation recently. Okay. Um, you're welcome. Um, and so, yeah, we, we came before you and we talked about the grand opening before in terms of sponsorships and some of the other things. Um, so this is just some more specifics. The date will be June 10th. I know we talked about that as well, I believe. Um, you've probably seen some flyers about it. Um, we're hoping it's gonna be a really great event. <laughs> uh, so we have some 
musical acts, some bands, some acoustic acts. Uh, we have some, <sighs> the dance studio will be doing a performance. We have a magician. Uh, we have um, the Shriners coming uh, from Springfield, and we do have, um, I believe the school is going to be doing some sort of performance. I'm not sure if it's uh, going to be musical or theater related at this time. Uh, we'll have food vendors. I know, um, I know the Harbor and the Carriage House, the Kiwanis food truck. Um, we had the um, a bull spit is going to be um, serving alcohol for some time during the event. Um, I just spoke with Jim Hunt today. Um, they will be pulling their own permits for that, so that's <laughs> come from us. Uh, we have you know bouncy houses, face painting. Um, we will be having fireworks at the end of the evening. Um, I think. I think that's all if you guys have any other questions for the time being. Okay. Um, just as a point of, of information, uh, mm -hmm. typically when we receive requests like this, as part of the paperwork that goes into the Dropbox, um, and I can picture other pages, typically when we get an entertainment permit, talks about what they're going to have, live entertainment or food or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think it would, it would be helpful, I know for me, to see the rest of those, you know, the entire application. Absolutely. Um, and also I know that there's no specific date on the application. I know that you, you're amending it to the June 10th. June 10th from 3 p.m. till 9 p.m. 2023 from 3 to 9 p.m. Any rain date? Uh, we do not have one. Okay. <laughs> Just being a Debbie Downer. It would be really difficult to reschedule all of the Something performances like and fireworks and everything for a, a separate date. Um, I believe the firework contract does allow us to rebook them for a different date um, for the fireworks, um, but we would have to really do a lot of work on that. Okay. We're hoping no rain. It's rain or shine, I believe, <laughs> is what I've written on all the things. Very good. Uh, questions, comments from the board? Madam Mrs. Chair. Anderson. Yes. Um, I, I really do agree with you because that was the first thing that stood out to me was when I looked at it, when? And then with all the information that you're giving us in, in adding fireworks, which is not on the application anywhere, I'm more comfortable when we have more information in front of us. Okay, so I did submit all the information. I'm so sorry you guys don't have it in front yeah, no, of you. Understood. That's why I addressed <laughs> it with, uh, yeah, it's, it's just awkward that I, mm -hmm. I had no idea what you were talking about. And I was, <laughs> Point taken. Anything further from the board? Uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. Just want to confirm that we will be having a detail inside the park to monitor the crowd and also a detail on Maple Street for traffic control. Yes, Those I already, be. I did already speak with um, Dan about that. Two the details. Two, yeah. Okay. Anything further from the board? If there is none, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. Move to approve the entertainment permit for the grand opening of the amphitheater scheduled for June 10th, 2023 from 3 to 9 p.m. as presented this evening. Second. Thank you, made and seconded to approve the request. Any further discussion? Seen and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The chair votes aye. I'm going to vote no, just because Eight. I don't have the information. And we have one no, so it's four, just past four, one. Thank you. You're all set? Good luck. Uh, next, we have Recreation Department. <laughs> uh, 2023 programming. Ms. Newton, you have the floor. Sure. So, if you may recall, not this current year due to construction, but the year before, we held monthly what we were calling picnic in the park events at the um, community park that were free to the 
to our residents and the surrounding communities. Um, and so we are planning to bring those back this year once the park is open again. Um, so right now I put in front of you the first three. We will hopefully be continuing them through October, November, and December as well. Um, but I'll come back once those get a little closer and I have some more details. Um, so our first event will be July 1st. Um, with a theme of kind of like the old-fashioned American cookout. Um, our next one will be August 5th, uh, the lazy, hazy days of summer, and uh, the following one will be September 2nd, a back-to-school blowout. Um, we have <laughs> kind of a variety of things going on. July, we'll also, um, at that event, have the Winter and Winds will be playing at the amphitheater. Um, and we're hoping to get you know some kind of barbecue food to be able to go out. All of the food permits will go through Board of Health um, and do their own certifications. Um, we'll have uh, like bocce and some other lawn games and things like that. Things you would find at kind of like a Fourth of July cookout because it will be kind of Fourth of July weekend. Um, so be along those lines. Um, the summer days, we're actually um, I spoke with one of the. Um, people who help organize some of the events and summer reading program through the Beals, um, and we're hoping to kind of partner with them, maybe do some, some hammocking of some sort, some relaxing, some reading, and do, um, we'll also be doing a town-wide kind of like talent show, like a, people can sign up to do their talents. Part of the reading program is, um, you know, it has to do with that kind of stuff, so that's why we chose that event for that date. Um, and then the back to school blowout we're hoping to do, we're hoping to have a band that's um, for music purposes that kind of brings in more of the teens that we don't get to target as much. Um, we're hoping to hold <laughs> um, a Nerf gun war in the woods <laughs> um, with different age categories, kids and then you know older kids. Um, and things along that line, things that would bring in you know the kids to celebrate going back to school the end of summer and all of that, I am, I wanna say, because I haven't confirmed the band yet, but I'm hoping it's a really good one. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I've got a comment, but I'll open up to the board first. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. The, the one thing I noticed here, there are no hours listed for these events. <laughs> Again, I think they were on the other, pieces of the form. Um, so the events will be 11 to 2, and I believe that the back-to-school blowout, we were thinking that it might be 11 to 3 based on um, some of the entertainment and the activities being hosted. And this uh, old-fashioned American cookout, are folks bringing their own food and cooking? No. <laughs> so um, you can bring your own food, as we've done in the past, like a picnic if you prefer um, but what we're hoping is to just have a, a food vendor that does like hamburgers hot dogs kind of food like that um, you know the summer days I'm not sure what we'll have for food for that one the back to school blowout we might have some somebody who provides you know pizza or something something that's more you know geared towards the kids um, so that's what we're looking to do I'm working on um, some RFPs for food trucks and stuff of that nature that would come to events so Um, I would just like to say, um, regarding the, the earlier permit, the Taste of Winchin, that's something that you've done before, that we've had in town before. Um, so I was okay voting for that without all the supporting documentation. That was not me. No, I understand. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, right. I, I just understand. I, I'm speaking in general. So that was me. Okay. Absolutely. I yeah. do understand no. completely. No, I understand. Uh, I'm just speaking in general. However, these are new events. Um, I, and there's plenty of time. I would like to see this come back before the board with the full documentation so we know times and what the plans are for the food and details and such like that. Okay. Mr. Town Manager. Madam Chair, if it's okay, cause there's, there's a few other items on the agenda and I don't know if it's possible, Mary, but would you be able to get a digital version of that email to me and I can pull it up so the group can review it now or, or on the, you know, or do you wanna just push it back entirely? I'd prefer to push it back, maybe okay. to our next meeting. Plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. Thoughts for the board? I agree. I can do that. I apologize for not putting that on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, so we'll bring that back at our next meeting, 
or the next meeting whenever you think when we have all the information that would be great thank you very much <clears throat> okay we have no boards commission committee department report this evening uh, 7.1 Beers Library's townwide book project Hey Kiddo update. Who is here this evening? My name is Patty Stanko. I am one of the staff at Beals Memorial Library. Um, we started this project in November, and I've been to a lot of other organizations in town. I spoke to the town manager just to let people know we were doing it. But then we got involved with moving and uh, down to the basement. So I apologize. I did not get to the select board yet, but I am here tonight. Um, we are doing what's called an all-town read. Uh, we have a number of copies of this book. It's called Hey Kiddo by Jarrett Krasowska. Uh, it's a graphic memoir. It tells his life story. He grew up in Worcester, raised by his grandparents because his mother was a heroin addict. Um, it received a nomination for a National Book Award in 2018 uh, and has received a lot of recognition. So we, we have a number of copies uh, around town. Some are here in Town Hall. We have some at the police station, the Clark, the CAC and the Senior Center. You are welcome to borrow a book. Uh, you also Beals Memorial Library. You are welcome to just pick up one of the books, read it, and then please return it so that other people will have the opportunity to read it. All we ask that people make a little check mark inside just so we kn we're trying to keep track of how many people read the book. So there's that. Um, along with it, we are having some panels on related issues related to the book. The first one will be this Saturday, uh, January 11th, at the Bud Fletcher Community Room at the Clark. Um, that theme is, that is on domestic abuse, and we have five, four panelists that will be talking about that issue from around the area. Uh, that is from 11 to 1 this Saturday. We invite people to come. We will be having, uh, the next panel will be in February, and that is on trauma-informed care for children. The next one in March is on mental health, and we are having one April 15th. I'm sorry, I don't know the March date offhand. It might be March 11th. And then April 15th uh, is on substance abuse. And then on April 28th, we uh, have been able to raise the money to bring Jarrett to town. So he will be speaking um, at the high school in the early afternoon. And then at 6 o'clock, he'll be back at the high school. We'll have um, a uh, kind of a meet and greet. And then he'll be giving his talk at 7 o'clock. And uh, we just thought it was an important topic for the town of Winchenden. And we hope people participate. We've gotten really good feedback so far. So if people have... Yeah, just I was um, at the senior center not long ago when they had their craft fair with copies of the book, and a number of people came up to me and said that several took copies of the book, several have read the book, and uh, they felt like this is really important because my neighbors are raising their grandchildren, and I know that there's a number of grandparents in town that that's the case, um, and just yeah, wait one just so far it's been good. So. We ask people to pick up a book and read it and, and join us at any of the panels or on August, April, excuse me, April 28th when Jarrett speaks. K-R-O-S. Questions? C-Z-A-N. Madam Chair? Yes, Mrs. Anderson. Can I just say I've seen signs all around town. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know what it was all about. And, and so I'm so happy that you came here. Oh, to yeah. explain we, everything. We did get the lawn signs. We did get it approved by the town manager. <laughs> no, I wasn't <laughs> saying that. I was just, I saw them and I went, yeah. yeah. Like no, I'm glad that people are noticing them. That's that's great. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we will take them up, but not until April 29th. So. And, yep. <laughs> yep. So thank you for your time. And I hope. Thank you. Yes. Hope you read the book. And I know I've seen these in uh, the town manager's office, too. I think you've got some of these. Yeah, we have books up Everywhere there. you can put them, yeah. Very yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Ford. The microphone, please. Okay. Thank you. Is this does this relate to? Yeah. Well, okay. and uh, into the mic, please. And, and for the I record, think state you, your name. You should be here for meetings like this with like important subjects, like moms on heroin and stuff. Mr. Ford, thank you. Um, thank you. As well, yeah. Um, we got to talk. Yes. <clears throat> this is Stanko. Um, I have had a conversation with um, Police Chief Walski. Okay. Um, he's very. Uh, aware of this, he is actually going to be a presenter on the substance abuse panel. He is coming on Saturday to our first panel, nice. um, and what else? He knows about it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Thanks. All right, now we have a 7.2, um, accepting scholarship donations for the amphitheater grand opening. Uh, we had talked previously um, about donations and accepting donations and such. <clears throat> um, Ms. Norton, would you give us an update on? Um, so what we um, put out was that um, we put out these forms based on another town who does sponsorships for an amphitheater that they also have. Um, and it just kind of gives us a space to keep record of who did the sponsorships and um, so everybody who did one filled one of these forms out so far, uh, and I've sent it upstairs uh, for you guys to have. Uh, currently, I just got another sponsorship in today. I believe our sponsorship total is about uh, just over $3,600 um, towards the grand opening, which is a great help to getting it off the ground. Um, and that's kind of the only update I have right now. Um, I am putting a post out um, stating that we're going to kind of stop the sponsorships for this event um, mid-March because we need some time to know how many signs and different things that we gave to the sponsors that we have to get in time for them to be made. Yeah. Um, I think okay. that's it. Um, Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to thank Mrs. Newton for all her work on this. Um, but in addition, um, just wanted to highlight the importance of this form in particular because I recall, you know, the, on the two instances that the board had a conversation regarding this topic, there was some hesitancy and concern. And so we wanted to make sure um, that we were thorough in the fact that when people donate this money, the second they donate it, it becomes public money, and we wanted a transparent process um, to avoid you know, what some may call appearance, uh, for example. So um, every dollar that comes in for this cause will be reviewed periodically at a public forum right up until the date of the event um, with a final report coming from Mrs. Newton's office just to kind of tally it all um, and air it all out just so everybody is aware um, you know, where money's coming from and where it's going. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry, refresh my memory. Uh, did we create an account for this money to go into, or what account are these deposits going into? So after speaking with the town accountant, uh, Joanne, I did speak with her about where we were going to put the money and how we want to handle that. So um, the park itself um, has a gift fund already set up that was um, very minimal balance that had nothing, and we weren't using it for anything. Um, so. After discussion with her, uh, we will be using that account for all sponsorships. Okay, and strictly excellent. for that purpose. And that is a recreation committee. Can account. I ask a question? Yes, Mrs. Anderson. Um, with that particular account, would you have access to the funds should you need them? Or would you have to wait until the money is appropriated at town meeting? No, that's a, it's considered a revolving account, so um, it's considered we can, a revolving yes, account. so we can access the money okay. when we need it for expenses related to this event. Yep. Mr. Ward, you look like you have something yes. to say. <laughs> Is this the first donation? Um, I, you should have a whole list of the sheets here. Um, one. This is not, you only got one. This no. is all we got. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not. That one actually just came in this week. Um, I would guess we have maybe 15, around yeah, 12 to 15 sponsorships as of right now, um, all varying levels. 
of amounts. Um, but I'm, I'm really blown away with um, the support from the community for this project, actually. Madam Chair. Wonderful. Yes, Mr. Ward. Well, my concern is we're voting a motion to accept this and, and really thank the donor. But without the other ones, I don't want to mention a name, mm -hmm. without the other 11 or 10 or whatever it might be. Yeah. So I think we need to wait till we have the full list and, and give recognition and the amounts by by name. So yes. I, I would just not. And if it's helpful it? for you for a list for next time, I also keep a, a spreadsheet. If that's oh, helpful, okay. I can send that along as well. I mean, I guess I understand what you're saying. Um, some donors may want to remain anonymous. I'm thinking that if the board so chooses this evening, we can um, you know, move to make a motion to accept all the monetary donations received up to this point and thank the donors in general. Um, is there anything holding up? What step could be held up if we mm -hmm. push this off a meeting? Sure, so you've actually, the, the board has already made the vote and you may have actually been absent um, for that one, but I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think at some point recently that vote had occurred to accept the donations. Um, I believe that was to solicit donations, not that accept it was? them. Yeah, but that is correct, that is correct. Right. Yeah. So I, I would say there'd be no impact. Um, for now, they're, you know, they're staying in, the, in an account, we're not expending the funds. So at the next meeting um, where Mrs. Newton is gonna be anyway, um, we'll, <laughs> we'll bring her by and we can do a full review of the list. Um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll pe periodically accept them as they come in, maybe every meeting just to do a, an update and it may be a good opportunity for the sake of outreach in the community anyway, just to um, you know drum up support and remind people that that's an ongoing initiative. Mm. Okay, well you did say that you were going to Put a cutoff for this event, but you still be accepting. Can can you accept donations in general at this point, or is it just for a specific event? Um, so I believe we're allowed to accept donations in general if someone came in and was like, "I want to donate just in general okay. um, to either recreation or the you know, the theater park, what, okay. whichever they prefer." Um, <laughs> The sponsorship to solicit the sponsorships for the grand opening did come in front of you. I believe we also brought a sponsorship packet in front of you mimicked from the town of Acton for yeah, um, future sponsorship initiatives, um, which will probably be coming up as well after the grand opening is set. Um, but the, the date for the grand opening sponsorships that I'm setting is uh, March 15th. Um, after speaking to uh, the businesses, the companies that will be doing our like program, like our signs and our shirts and all of those things. Um, that's a good date for them to be able to order the right amount and get them all made and stuff. Right. Um, um, I guess in my mind, there's a difference between a donation and a sponsorship. There is. All right. So where on this document, the form just says donation and sponsorship form. Business, business amount of donation or sponsorship in kind donation value so how do we know if this is a donation or if it's a sponsorship oh. I, I could probably speak to that I think so by design um, the way it's set up you need to hit a certain threshold in order for your name to be advertised on the back of a t-shirt or back mm -hmm. of a sign so I think it's something that you, you may have um, luckily are already addressed um, but I think that would be it, is when, once you hit a certain dollar threshold, which I don't know offhand, you may, um, there's, you know, you get a, there's a sign for like the season, for example, if you hit a certain dollar threshold. Yeah, that I'm familiar with. So, so I would think anything under that would be a donation because you're, you're not receiving an advertisement in exchange. In any way, yeah. Right? yeah. Well, I actually think that all of our tiers give some sort of advertisement for the event, maybe not like outside of the event, like the top kind of tier. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, but I can change the wording on that. Um, it was something that I, again, I use from another town in Massachusetts that right. does the same thing, um, but I can make that specific to say a sponsorship. Yeah, I'm just thinking that way it's clear. Yep. Um, so if somebody signs up for something and they think, oh, well, I'm giving this amount yep. and I'm gonna get this and they don't fall into that category. Nope, you know, that kind of I thing. understand. 
Okay. I will adjust that form for you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yes. Okay. Um, so we're looking to bring this back at the next meeting, I believe. Okay. We could add that to the next agenda. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Excuse me, Ms. Newton. Hmm. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Next up, 7.3. Town school cost revenue sharing process discussion. I'm open to another name on that one as well, if you have a shorter one. Um, yeah, TSCRSP, blah, blah. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So as we're beginning to think about kicking off budget season, um, Superintendent King and I meet about bi-weekly um, to discuss a variety of topics, but among those is that uh, when budget season comes up, this conversation always kind of gets steam again in terms of, um, you know, solar revenue or the override or really pick anything. Um, and, it, and so far in my experience, the history on that kind of really depends on who you ask. Um, and so we felt as part of this, um, particularly for Superintendent King, where the school committee has tasked him to um, work with the town to kind of formalize and bring together all of these different agreements. Um, when Thad and I are having those conversations, we always come back to the fact that realistically there should be a determination made by, you know, in some capacity, the people of Winchenden and not from the town manager and the superintendent of schools. And so in an effort to do that, um, we've, we've kind of set up this framework, I guess, to provide an opportunity for that conversation, um, creating a working group that would consist of two members of the school committee, two members of the board of selectmen, and one member of the finance committee. Um, Superintendent King and I would participate, but be non-voting members just as administrative support effectively. Um, in so many words, we felt that this fell, fell under the umbrella of policy creation, which is not, you know, not really our place. Uh, but we're always happy to execute whatever policy the, the boards and committees come to a determination on. So um, as part of that, as I mentioned, things like solar revenue, things like um, the override, things like ev even down to um, conversations about um, shared costs and how we break that down in the budget, uh, deferred costs, um, sharing of staff, sharing of different resources, equipment. We want to kind of cover all of this all in one shot. Um, and the way that I envision it anyway is that ultimately this group would report back to the tri-board at large and kind of bring back their findings. That would provide an opportunity for the tri-board to provide input on that smaller group's um, thoughts. And then from there, I think as a group, you could all vote potentially to adopt the document if you were in agreement, um, which I would hope you would, you would get to a point where you could come to agreement. So my ask this evening, um, if that sounds agreeable, is if you could, um, amongst yourselves nominate two individuals to represent that board that I described and then I would envision that group would meet pretty regularly throughout um, over the next few months as we make our way through the budget process. Thank you. Questions, comments? Madam Chair, I feel like we did this before and I was on it with um, Tom Payne from Finance Committee, Greg Vine, and nothing really came from it. Oh. How, who was? There's uh, different leadership now. I was going to say, are we talking a few well, town manager think, or two back or superintendent yeah. or two back? Okay, um, yeah. Well, I think the problem was that, um, you know, as far as cost sharing and everything goes, that's what we, our goal was, is, is find out how we could maybe save some money. But we, we weren't really able to find anything. Okay. Um, of substantial savings to either the school or the town. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we, we looked at it pretty, pretty hard and no one was able to come up with anything. Okay. Um, it is a different You know, it could we'll be different set knows. of eyes or whatever. Um, right. Could yeah. be, but I, I, okay. We called I, I, oh, uh, yeah, we spent a lot of time. Yeah, I'm sure. Trying. Anything else? Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. Okay, um, I'm, I, I'm going to zero in on solar revenue, mm. and you probably know where I'm going to go on this. There was a vote taken May 18th, 2015, at the special town meeting, Article 16, 
which said, and it was a two-thirds vote and it was approved, for the town to petition the legislature for the creation of a special fund to be known as the Capital Stabilization Fund to which shall be credited without further appropriation all revenues received in accordance with any solar payment in lieu of taxes agreements. So that the town said all solar monies should have gone into a capital plan. But it doesn't appear that was ever done. Hmm. So when this committee looks into possible f monies to be shared revenues, I think legal, the legal, f our legal counsel needs to get into that article because the town voted to create that and over the years the town has just ignored what the town voted. Two thirds of the people voted for that. Now does that mean we can just ignore a town vote? because we don't do anything? What was no. that fund called again? No. You know what? I think it, I'm the, sorry, one second. What was the name of the fund? What was fund? the name of the fund again? It's capital. Capital Stabilization Fund in which all the uh, solar payments would go into. Capital Stabilization Fund. It was really to put the fund. solar monies into this fund. Okay. And I mean, I've done some research and I can't find any action that was taken Formally, and this was a town vote, so I would think it would have to go back to the town to rescind that vote. Mm -hmm. And Change when we're right. talking about the tri board maybe looking at this as policy, sharing this solar money, if the town made this decision, 2015 wasn't that long ago, then it seems like this has to go back to the town for a vote. May 2015? It was May 18th, 2015, Article 16. And it was passed by two thirds vote of the town. Mrs. Look at Anderson. that, we've already made progress. <laughs> so <laughs> other than that, if, 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 if we can't do anything with that, you have to pull those solar monies, it can't be involved in this sharing with the school. Okay, Mrs. Anderson. Wow. Um, okay. I feel like originally, and I don't think this, I think you're correct, but I feel like originally we, we did use capital. I think the school's got a camera security system with the first year, if I remember right. And um, I can't remember what the heck the town got, but I remember that security system, it was on capital planning, it was on our thing. Um, and, and that's what we were working on, because I was on capital planning back then. That's the only reason I know that. Not saying that you're not wrong with your, no, your so account. This wasn't a crap. Yeah, solar created. funds haven't um, gone into, they, but they're going into the general. I don't think it happened since. Hmm. And it became a, a thing. Did we have a, another Warren article that said, and how do we start sharing those? Was it a Warren article or was it something at a tri board meeting that we would start sharing the solar funds? I don't remember. Because I got news, 2015 was a long time ago for me. <laughs> and it was also, if you recall, um, when the new board came on board, mm -hmm. new town manager, um, n not, to, uh, not to use that as an excuse that it wasn't, didn't get done, please understand that. Um, so perhaps we need to do some research. And do it right. Let's find out. Yeah, because yeah. bottom line. Going back to that May. Whether we were new article. or whatever happened. Correct. It doesn't override a town vote. Absolutely correct. Yeah. No, nobody's arguing that. I think you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this, is, this conversation was a great example um, on a smaller scale of, I think, the conversation that I'm hoping we'll have with this larger group. Um, Um, anyone interested, able uh, to participate? When are you planning on meeting? I, I guess it kind of depends on the makeup of the board and their availability. But I think if, if you're volunteering, God would make you the first one in so you can really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it depends what days. Mm -hmm. Thursday's out for me. Just throwing that out there. I could volunteer. Danielle, Danielle and Barbara. Let's see if I can find my old stuff from the old last time.
Um, and Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Yes, that's okay. Mr. Ward, could I have the date of that again? The date of the town meeting? Yeah. Uh, May 18th, 2015. 518, 2015. Article 16. So, so we didn't have a town manager at that point. I can't remember what year that was, if it was the recall. That was when the, re yeah, the recall was in 2015. Yeah, that's when I, we took the office. Of May, so we didn't even have that a was town a, manager. I'll just like, I'm the, just trying to the figure minutes out of that, that meeting was dropped. a Saturday okay. meeting. Hmm? It was on a Saturday. I just looked at the yeah. minutes in the archives. Ooh, that was a, so I, think it was I remember that one, <laughs> unusual year. <laughs> Um, but, but it does make sense because we didn't, there was a limbo. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. it doesn't, as I said, doesn't excuse the fact it wasn't no. done. No, not trying to say that. Um, all right. So I make a motion, a motion to nominate Barbara Anderson and Danielle Lapointe as the representatives for the Board of Selectmen for the town slash school revenue slash cost sharing group. Name change potentially there. With the understanding that said committee will be dissolved following the implementation of an agreement between the Board of Selectmen and school committee. Seconded. Thank you. Um, just under further discussion, I will just state um, as a backup, I'd be, I'd be um, with full disclosure, um, I am working as a substitute for the school system. So whether that would disqualify me, um, certainly take that into account. I wanted to make that public. We're in the middle of a vote, one moment. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Mr. Ford, I'll give you about 20 seconds. <laughs> I just wanted to volunteer for the committee. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, moving on, we have old business. 8.1, this is a review of the Community Preservation Act Exploratory Committee. Mr. Sulzbach. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I will note that this document is titled revised because at the last meeting it was pointed out there was an error in the formula and it should read 0.03 rather than 0.3 um, as highlighted here on the second page roundabout. Um, the second piece is that um, I'm not going to be speaking to this this evening, but we're actually joined um, by a couple members of the committee, but specifically Mr. Mark DeWart. Um, who's going to be standing in for Mr. Romanowski um, to speak on this topic and also should the board have any questions. Good evening. Good evening. How's it going? It's going well. How are I'm, you, Mark? I'm just here to ask questions, or answer questions, basically, <laughs> since, since you weren't here last time. Just for the record, state your name, please. Uh, Mark Dorwart. Thank you very much. All right. So if we could just, uh, Mr. Town Manager, um, scroll up a little bit. So um, just review as a committee, they concluded that the benefit outweigh the costs of the Community Preservation Act in the town of Winchenden. They recommend the town locally adopt the CPA at a 3% threshold, ensuring the greatest return on our investment. While the match from the state varies from year to year, this would represent a 100% match on the current determining metrics and anticipated governing body decisions. We believe the town can greatly benefit from this resource in meeting our various community goals. Um, and they're requesting a special town meeting in March of 2023. If the vote passes, the matter will be placed on the spring 2023 ballot at the annual elections on May 1st. This would, the passing, adopting of this will allow for a dedicated funding source to support community priorities, including the 2020 master plan and elsewhere for identified needs in the areas of housing, recreation, open space conservation, and historic preservation. The fund's disbursement would be bound by the CPA guidelines and by an independent citizen-led CPA committee and would not be rolled into the town's general operating budget. 
Further approval is required by a vote at the annual town meeting. Relying on a year-to-year -year appropriation in the annual budget as been done in the past precludes long-range planning and undertaking complex projects. A dedicated funding source allows the community to earmark funds for citizen-driven initiatives in the four areas listed above and allows for predictability in project planning. And there are some exemptions. Um, as we've talked about before, exemption one uh, is a low-income housing or low to moderate income senior housing exemption. They recommend, the recommendation of the committee is yes, we do adopt that exemption. Second exemption possibility, class three commercial and class four industrial properties um, exemption. The committee's recommendation is no, do not adopt that one exemption. The third possible exemption the first 100,000 of the taxable value of residential real estate is exempt. It automatically applied to residential property tax bills prior to the bills issued. The recommendation is to yes, adopt that exemption. The last possible exemption, the first $100,000 of taxable value of class three commercial and class four industrial properties. And the committee recommends yes, to adopt that exemption. Um, the CPAEC has also received tentative support from the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation. While this is subject to an official vote from the RBF, this could result in a reduction from 3% down to 2%. And that reduction would be on, that would be the town's portion that would be reduced because Robinson Broadhurst would pick up that additional 1%. Right. Okay, thank you. Obviously very grateful for their continued support. So the formula, you start with your assessed property value, subtract 100,000 uh, using the FY23 tax rate of 1340 per thousand. You would multiply your adjusted assessed property value by 0 0.01340. And then correct me if I'm wrong, then you take that <coughs> number and multiply it by point zero three which is the recommended amount of the of the community preservation um, please see the attached spread we have the attached spreadsheet somebody show me that math <laughs> I need it demonstrated. Want me to do it in real time yeah yeah um, and we, we do have the spreadsheet I think it was in the last week's so I'm gonna have no, to I want to see the math no, I'm gonna do it for you right now but oh, to, to answer the chair okay. um, I'll, the I'll get you that spreadsheet too if I think if you look on your tablet um, it's in last gotcha. um the last meeting. last meetings yeah is that the spreadsheet that said so like something like not guaranteed not guaranteed not guaranteed yes Probably, yeah. yeah i want to make it abundantly clear um <laughs> just that uh, it, is it um that the robinson broadhurst foundation hasn't firmly committed to that 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 was part of this grant round Thank um you. so throw out a number for a house value Two hundred eighty thousand. that's what we're using for the fire station as the the average not average. median um, the assessed value property value. Sure. so assessed value you would take house. 280 you would take a hundred thousand off the top for the exemption that brings it down to 180. go multiply. slow yep sure <laughs> multiply that by 0 0.01340 which is the tax rate per thousand so that gives you 2412 and then you would multiply that by either 0 0.03 or if Robinson Broadhurst Foundation comes through 0 0.02, but we'll do 0 0.03 here. Um, so you're, you would see a $72.36 roughly um, increase over the course of the year. Um, so qu quarterly, which I know some people bristle at that, but it would come out to about $18 a quarter. At most, could be less. Could possibly be less. Yeah, or more. For, for a two hundred eighty thousand dollar home, um, and that math checks out for whatever your starting point is. Whatever you know, so if you're twice that, three times that value, you know, whatever it may be. So if you know, I guess for the sake of argument, if it was a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar home, uh, minus a hundred thousand, multiplied by point oh. One three four zero. 
and then multiply that by 0.03. So if you have a three quarter of a million dollar home, your annual increase would be $261.30. Quarterly, it would be about $65 a quarter for a $750,000 home. Do you know what the average assessed house value in Winchester is? Uh, it was recently updated to 280 in the most okay. the most recent That's tax classification hearing. Okay. Give, or, give or take about 282, I believe. Okay. Yeah. And now that number will increase every year as our taxes increase, correct? Real estate taxes. So if the value, if the value of your property increases, or if the tax rate increases. Tax rate. Uh, correct. It's always multiplied okay. by the, the, yeah, the two yeah. are tied We in. all know it yeah. doesn't go down, oh, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, it's not going to go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. And if one goes down, then the other one goes up. Yeah, so, so if, you're, if your value yeah. is increasing, then the tax rate typically decreases, and then the inverse occurs. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So that this will increase along. It'll still be 3%, but as the taxes increase, the, what you're paying, this will increase. Uh, proportionally. Yeah. Per, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, questions, comments? Mr. DeWard is here to answer any questions we may have. I, d I have questions. This is interesting. Um, let me figure this out. How much, um, first I think to the town manager, how much if you take everybody's, say, $72, mm -hmm. put it all together mm -hmm. annually, how much of an increase that would go into a CPA account would the town recognize annually about between the two so what do so, you mean between the two sorry between the two sources so if you had the town commitment no 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 he's, oh, he, he that's made, just the town and then we get matched by the state he's yeah he's right no how much would the town recognize just from our residents con contribution yeah just from the residents mm -hmm. how many houses do we have it would be six? roughly 250 260 thousand dollars annually okay so I'm going to use 250 because it's easy. Easy math, yeah. Right. And then hopefully we would be matched 100% by the state, mm -hmm. correct? Now, that isn't matched annually, or is that matched by project? Annual, annually. 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 Yeah. Doesn't matter if we spend it or not. Right. It can earn investment if. You, you can bank it. Um, and it just it stays there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you don't have to spend it. You have to you have to set aside ten percent for housing. Um, open space. Open space. What was the other one? Historic preservation. Yeah. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have if you don't yeah, spend it, you have to three. set aside ten percent for each one of those. For housing, and it has to be spent on those. Open space, and historic, and recreation. So the four things mentioned in the letter is housing, recreation, open space, conservation. And historic preservation. Yeah. So they say you know ten percent or whatever they tell you, right? How, how you how to break that up, but it does allow you like, um, old Murdoch, God forbid, needs more work down the road, and we know it's going to be three million. We can bank this towards a well, bigger well, project. Well, that was actually, my there's other a concern. Yeah. there's a process for that. So, okay. so it's it's based on applications to a CPA okay. committee that will be that will be formed, and. They won't know how much money they're going to get for sure until they until they get it till at the end of the year. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, you can anticipate some things to a degree, but you can't be 100% sure. But anyway, there will be applications throughout that a year period, and that that board will look at the applications, make sure that the applications pass muster with the the restrictions of the law. Okay, right. And then once once they've looked at all the applicants for a year, then they'll review, and then they'll decide which ones they think the town should then vote on at town meeting and then the people of the town will verify whether we spend it or not. Okay. So if it's gonna to go to Murdoch, it would have to be applied for by whatever entity wants to apply for it yep. for Murdoch. And then it'll be weighed against Everyone what the committee thinks where it president. should go and the yeah. town will be able to vote yes or no, I want it to go to that or not. And then so ultimately like hopefully this, the CPA committee will, will evolve over time and understand what the people are wanting or not and the next year they'll do a better job of putting forward things if the town rejects something per se, you know, example. And so it's not a rolling approval process, it's like a one time per year from a pool? Well, I mean, you have, a, you have your year before you get the money for people to apply for it. 
But so the board then before before your town meeting where you vote on it. So the board would choose projects like one time each year. I'm saying not as they come in. Yes or no. It's up to the board really. But um, as I'm putting forth, I think that it should be. You should give a year for everybody to apply, so that you're not saying this one's getting the money and get their ball rolling, and then you're cutting somebody out that comes in a couple months later. Yeah, I would agree. You'd have to have an, an yeah, application it's, period. It's not equal to you know, it's it's not equal if you don't yeah. give everybody a chance to apply. And you can't say everybody has to apply in January. I mean, or whatever month that the money comes through. Okay. So if there were a large project, um, someone could apply to the committee. Mm -hmm. Um, if they get approved, great. They would they would get that. If not, um, so they so they say they get a portion of what the project overall is. The next year, they would reapply. Well, they're apl they're applying for an amount. I don't think right. they're getting a portion of like they're not getting a fraction. They're getting if they're accepted, they're getting what they applied for. But only for one year. Or can you can the, would, could you actually make a commitment for multiple? I think it would depend on the application and what the okay. committee decides. I yeah. think, okay, because I, I, I know exactly where you're going. Because this is how I was looking at it: is if you have a five million dollar project, which is not unreasonable for our projects, mm -hmm. and um, quite frankly, two fifty is probably a drop in the bucket for that. Mm -hmm. And should you apply um, for your five million dollar project? My understanding is the other three categories have to have also some of that money. Yep. No, I mean, they, you have to have the ten percent only, and after that, it's up to the committee and the town vote. Wait, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Um, but if they get ten percent of the two fifty, do the math. So, is so it, if there's a bigger pro if there's a big project that's five hundred million, say or whatever, five hundred thousand project. No, we're looking at a five million dollar project. Okay, if you're looking at a five million dollar project, the town can the committee and the town vote can decide we want to accrue money and then spend it down the road. Like that has happened in other towns and I spoke to one town, Monson, and that's what they did a lot. They would they would accrue the money for a project that they knew they wanted to d bring forward down the road. Three or four years or whatever. Yeah. So somebody could apply for that and say, you know, we want this money, you know, five years from now, we think it's fair for you to set aside this money. So you could say no, 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 no to all these to wait for a project that. Yeah, or you can we can do a little bit of each. You can build some up, or you can build some up without knowing what it's going to be built for. Okay. I had another question, but I <laughs> forgot it. It's not coming yeah, back. Yeah, I, I have a question, Mrs. Zalta. When you're talking about giving, like they applying, who exactly is they? They could be they could be a couple that just bought a. A uh, house that's on the historic registry, but they can't, or they're applying for a loan to buy the house and they can't afford to do the work that's necessary by law to, for that house. It could be, it could be, um, Justin could apply for it. Okay. Uh, so you could apply for it. A committee could apply for it. A board could apply for it. An institution could apply for it. It's, you know. I guess what I, I so I see that as individuals benefiting from this fund versus I thought the whole town was supposed to benefit. The town benefits by, let's say that there's no capital plan budget for a dog park coming into town, and the people really want a dog park. Well, a, a committee that, that's in charge of that could apply for this to pay for the dog park or purchasing that land. Or if there's a uh, conservation <coughs> entity that you know preserves land, like a conservation type thing, they can come to the town and say, we're gonna apply for X amount of money to buy this plot of land, and we're gonna we're gonna grow plants that help butterflies grow okay. and reproduce. And so then the town can say, we but it's not restricted to just town projects. Well, I mean, what do you mean by town? It's municipal. within the town. But boundary. I mean, like the town the entire community, town community town projects, projects versus geared by individual like town projects. Government. Because I'm just thinking, to me, I look at this. If you say an individual could apply and get this money, then they take this money and they benefit from it, and then uh, how does the town like nobody get can the money back? Nobody's like, are there gonna restrictions placed on properties that receive this money. So, so. It, it's so nuanced and restricted by the law that nobody's going to be able to apply for this money for them in a way that's not going to benefit the community. M Mark, could yeah. I give an example? Yeah. Sure. So, and I think the one I 
one that I really like in this program is the first one you listed. So like if there's a, you know, a couple, right, a, a private entity that had a historic um, home in town. Um, and, and I love this example because I have a good real world example where there is a smaller community. And Take a little bit sorry, more, please. sure. Um, it's a good example where there, where there is a smaller community um, that had, you know, what you could call a square, uh, you know, their ta historic town square. And there were 10 properties there. And the town itself um, had invested millions of dollars in this square over the past decade. But there was always one house um, where an older couple lived that didn't have the resources to fix it up and it was just, just falling in on itself, an absolute eyesore. Um, the property had been around for 275 years. It was, it was relevant to the history of the community. Um, you know, whoever built it was some doctor that you know, gave the first grant that you know, the, was the namesake of the town. In that instance, they had applied through that community's Community Preservation Act, through that committee. Um, the committee, upon their review, felt that it was something because it was, you know, even though privately owned property, something that was culturally important to the community. Um, they had invested tons of money in that area, but that one house just made, you know, was just a source of blight. Um, and so after that, it went to town meeting where the entire community agreed, you know, this is an appropriate use to award $20,000 for them to pick up, uh, to fix up that front porch in a way that's historically appropriate. So, um, like, you know, the inherent value of that is that it's preserving a piece of town history, even though it's privately owned, um, it's removing a source of blight. So it, it's kind of a, you know, slightly intangible and indirect benefit to the town. Um, but it couldn't be just somebody walking in and the Community Preservation Committee just writing them, you know, carte blanche, here you go, here's some money for you for your private cause. It still had to go through a whole public process, had to go to town meeting floor, um, got vetted. And I think that's the important part um, that I think Mark is highlighting as well. Is it's like a very controlled process. There's a lot of oversight. It's very visible. A lot of what the CPA committee, not ours, not the exploratory, but the final committee will be doing is, is parsing out what falls within the restrictions of the law. Mm -hmm. So they'll go through that before it ever comes to the town meeting, you know. Because those requirements are already laid out. I mean, oh, we yeah. have to follow yeah. those. It's, we can't They're really nuanced and, and there's a lot to it. But, yeah. it's, but it's all, uh, you know, it's a rare time when the nuance of the law is actually beneficial. Mm. I mean, so, Amy, to kind of what you're getting I to? I, I get it now. I understand. Yeah. Um, I think, and, think and then one other question would be, so we agree to this. We're stuck with it for at least five years, correct? And wasn't there a thing about in five years you can say we don't want yeah, it Yeah, but his, his, historically nobody's ever done that. Nobody's oh, ever, no, but I'm just it, asking. They've tried, but nobody's ever been successful. So it, I think if we vote for it, we've got to pretty much plan on it's here. Okay. But at minimum, you do have to keep it for five. I mean, no, nobody's nobody's ever not ha kept it. Like even if people have tried to get rid of it, it's Madam never been successful. Chair. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank much. you. Yep. Yes, Mrs. Lapointe. I remembered. Are there any provisions or restrictions that speak to any of the funding ever being used for any of like the um, water or sewer <laughs> or any of the other infrastructure that taxpayers struggle with? Yeah, it doesn't go to. The, Mm. No, I no, can't remember. I, I, was I just couldn't remember. I was in a couple it's, of the initial it's, meetings. I mean, think of it as separate from the capital plan. Think of it as separate okay. from the regular budget. Like mm -hmm. it's, it, it does things that aren't already being tackled. Okay. Yeah, if, and if you look at those four categories, those are things that typically are not, you know, first off the bat getting taken care of, recreation, historic preservation, um, and such. Um, and, and just, you know, our, this is for us this evening, um, should the board do decide, you know, make a motion or whatever, it's it's going to not um, tonight, right? Beg pardon. <laughs> to place um, not a recommendation on this, but no. but to place the um, to announce the date of the special um, town meeting. Thank you, special town meeting. Right, that's where I was going. From here, it goes to a special town so, meeting, and then and even then, it goes to the annual town meeting. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, annual, it goes to a ballot. ballot. It goes to a ballot. ballot. My ballot apologies. Vote. Yes. Okay. The ballot. So, so there's something I want to correct from last time. I didn't know if it was 20 or 30 percent. Okay. It's 30 percent, and I don't know if if you watched the last meeting on tape or not. But yeah, this is one of the big things that CPA can do. Is it, if they, there's situations where they can put 30 percent down for a property, and the state will pay 70 percent. Oh yeah. So, Wait so a yeah. for like yeah. preserving land for you know mm -hmm. deer, or butterflies, or whatever you know. So that's, and I'm not sure the particulars on what types of land, but like, um, 
people have done it, like that's been a major use of this thing. Okay. To acquire land. Because you can, you know, with 30% get land. Yeah. The state Wait a minute. The rest. Go We're, back. The state doesn't offer that in other situations. It's just for the CPA. Okay. I need, I need that explained to me again. Slow. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> the whole, once you started with 30%. So, so there's lands like uh, um, somebody can buy a piece of land for conservation or a park or whatever. Somebody under, or the under the town. CPA, and under the CPA laws, if the CPA puts 30% down using the CPA funds, the state will come in with the rest of the 70%. Okay, but let's go back to is it somebody or the town? Is it has to be an applicant? An Any applicant, applicant. Yeah. does not the have CPA, to be the municipality. Yeah, that purchases okay. the property. That falls under and the I'm criteria sure some, of. I'm sure there's some restrictions on that, that that we haven't delved into as a committee, but yeah. But um, I have talked to um, a chair of a, a, an existing board that's used it to do that several times. But if it's conservation land, the state will automatically go in 70. Yeah. Correct. If yeah. you pay for 30 of it out of your CPA funds, interesting. Very interesting. <coughs> I mean, the state has money. So. Let me, <laughs> I know, Go ahead, Barbara. it takes me a long time to process math, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> if I was an individual and I wanted to purchase some acreage, I could put in my application to CPA, get 30%. Well, what are you buying the land for? Conservation. Okay. Because it's in my backyard. That, con that conservation. And I don't want any neighbors. That Kind of like you, you know. <laughs> That conservation purpose will have to fall within the restrictions of the law. But if it did. If it does, then yeah. Then I can own that land, even though it's never going to be built on. It'll be conservation, butterfly land, well, whatever you want to call it. The town will land. Huh? The town will buy the land. So the it, town will buy the land, yeah. not just the applicant. Right. It will have to be the municipality, not the individual. Right. It wouldn't if be some, like a privately owned, like your own privately owned forest that you use public part, money to buy. The private part only comes into play with the like the couple old couple fixing up a historic mm -hmm. home they own. Right. Not it doesn't come into play with for buying land. Okay. An individual can or a, or a conservation group can put forward the okay. idea of buying the land with the town money, CPA money, and then the state comes in with the seventy percent. And then it's but concerned. but you're not buying land for individuals. And the town owns gotcha. it. That's okay. what I wanted and, to know. Thank and you. once the land is purchased, it has to be uh, you know stewarded, and that has to be done by the town or the town can um, farm it out to a vendor. Yeah. Madam Chair. And all this stuff has to be totally recorded, like to the point that the CPA committee will be hiring an assistant to take care of it, like a part-time person. Who's going to pay for that? It comes out of the CPA. Money? So that's so, so, more out of that 250 So it's something like, I think, 5% um, it's an administrative tip typically fee. goes administrative towards administration, fee. and then that will pay for the for a part-time employee. But you, you, I mean, no volunteer is gonna be able to handle it. You need a professional. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, definitely. Mrs. LaPointe. Um, this might be too much for tonight, but what kind of deed restrictions come with, I'm, I'm talking about the 30, 70 purchases. What kind of deed restrictions come from that? Would the town someday be able to try to change its use or is that kind of a conservation res restriction res in perpetuity? The restrictions are in the perpetuity. Yeah. Whether with no land, allowance for like special zoning approval. If it's or, if it's sold, anything happens to restrictions in the perpetuity. It goes with the title. Yeah, and and you know, that that goes into effect even like APRs or anything your know, conservation restrictions that we have now, they go with the property. Yeah. I was hoping so. I just wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mrs. Anderson, I'm sorry. I think I cut you off. I'm trying to do math in my head. Mm. <laughs> so there's there's four categories. So if you're buying an acre for ten dollars, <laughs> okay, there's four categories, correct? Yeah. And each gets ten percent. Or ten percent total. At least ten percent. At least ten percent each. Each. Okay. So ten percent annually. All right. Yep. You're just talking one year. Of, of, the, so of the fund. Ten percent of two hundred fifty is twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. And we do that four times, because we have four categories. Correct. So that equals $100,000 that's already committed, specifically committed. Mm -hmm. So of that original 250, we're committed 100,000. So that leaves us 150,000 that's not committed yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So if they figure about 5% will be the admin fee. So half of 25 is 1250. So if we subtract our admin fee, then nine, that's a seven, that's a five. It gives us 147,500 additional monies. That we don't have. That we have, and we can use it. That we can divvy up on projects. For other projects so that, and such. That also that 10% is just what has to go at least to that thing. Correct. And those things are, are what the CPA is. Like the restrictions force it into those things anyway already, so. It's not like it's a different, of it's course. not different money. But so you could put that, whatever number you just said, you could put that in to invest and grow for a few years. Right, so so by example, not to speak for this hypothetical future committee that may may exist, but what you'll typically, typically see in a town is like the housing category is usually the lowest funded. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but that 10%, you let it stack up over 10 years, like that could be enough to like potentially build affordable housing units in town or something along those lines. So it's um, by design, they, they make sure you make investments in all the areas, but even if it's a small amount, it's, you know, it, it's, it still adds up. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I found too, is that most of the money seems to go towards purchasing land or like a park or pr preservation. Sometimes it will go to fixing up a town building, like the Murdoch or something. That's where most of it that I've seen comes goes. And if you find okay. one year that you have a huge housing need, you can vote like in your committee to say, all right, well, we're going to do 70% um, to housing and 10% to the other three categories for just this year because we, as a committee, we determine that's our need. So if you want to. And then still that vote has to be approved mm -hmm. at town meeting. Yeah. Yep. So, so the voters will have the final say. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. They'll have the yay or nay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They won't know the nitty gritty of what the, what the committee didn't put forth, but they can come to the committee meetings. Yeah. yeah. Public, or yeah. look at the minutes. You yeah, know. Public hearing or whatever yeah. is required. Yeah. <coughs> Madam okay. Chair. This is the point. And then what happens um, if the town vote is no? Does everything wait for an additional year? Their, their vote will be no on that item. Just each individual? As, as I see it, like that's, okay. I mean, I think, that the, I think that they can set it up as one vote, but in my mind, and I don't know what the rest of the committee feels, but um, I, I think that, you know, we should at least talk about putting it forward as one, each item separately. So yes for this park, yes for this building, okay. yes for that conservation land or no. Okay. And then that way, and we can put that in the bylaw that, that we'll have to write. So, yeah, that would have to be and added. that's what people will be voting on. So, and I think that's, you know, we still have to discuss that as a committee, but. Thank you. Barbara. So will your bylaws and everything be ready, the bylaw be ready by the March town meeting? Well, I would hope so, but there you gotta talk to the rest of the committee. <laughs> yeah, and, and correct me. So provided in the event, should it pass this, this evening, it goes to town, sorry, back up, it goes to special town meeting. After special town meeting, it goes to the ballot. Should this bylaw or at what point would that work have to be done? I mean, at, up until. When you vote on it, I think you have to have the bylaw written when you vote on. I would think so. Ballot, I wouldn't yeah. vote on anything okay. if I don't have the information. You would have to have the bylaw drawn In up by the special town meeting. And definitely in my personal opinion, okay. whether it's legal or not, I think we, we shouldn't ask people to ballot vote on something that's nebulous. Okay, I agree. I'm just trying to get the time frame straight. Okay. Questions, comments? After all, we are at. <laughs> I just have questions on the actual date of this meeting, but I'll wait till we get to that. Yeah, I, I'm wondering why do we have to have this meeting, a March meeting? No. Um, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, yeah. and I, I hear that question a lot. So it's, it's the way um, the timing works out that we're required by the state. So you, there has to be like a certain reporting period in between when you have a, a vote of your um, body, which in this case would be a town or special town meeting, um, and when it actually hits the ballot. So the way I have it mapped out here, you would hit that time requirement required by the state. Because we already- For the vote. Correct. But not required by the state to set this up. Correct. So 
I'm not, well, well, I guess correct, depending on what you mean by that. Uh, so, <laughs> well, you know, like, like, do you have to get within the fiscal year you of the state? In order, do you have to? A certain amount of days. Um, and I, th I think it's 45. It's a certain amount of days between the, the town, special town meeting and the ballot vote. Right. Oh, no, I get that. But I'm saying, it, does the state require that? Like, so, so we, we say, if we say yes, mm -hmm. and then we slap it on the, the tax bill, mm -hmm. and then you start collecting it, mm -hmm. when does the state start matching the money? Oh, I, I understand what oh, you're saying. So is it, it's is a it fixed connected to it's a fiscal a, period? It's a fixed time of year every year. OK. And um, the matching process is in three rounds. The first round is pretty much guaranteed to be at the same time every year. The second and the third round might be late, and and the, up until this last the last year, it's been pretty much <coughs> set in stone. But the last couple of years, the governor has held back on deciding when to kick out the second and third round. Um, and the Is second and third round are what put us into the 100% match category. Mm -hmm. So um, I think last year it was like six months late. Okay, and there's no normal. guarantee. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that the state's going to match our funds, and there's no guarantee that the state will have the funds. There's a, there's a guarantee that they're going to match 20%, and then that's the first round is guaranteed. So you take all the towns that have applied for this thing, they all get a fraction of, um, I can tell you if you want to know, but they all get a fraction of a certain amount of the fund. And then the second round, based on your population and your um, value of property in the town, business, town properties, private properties, your value is, puts you at a decile ranking system. And based on that, you get a certain percentage in the next round or you're not in that round. We qualify to be in the second and third round. So, so basically, based on our current economic conditions, we qualify to get the full percent yeah. match down the road. And I, th I think the letter does a good way of wording that, but it's like basically based on existing conditions. Yeah. Down the road, if the economic condition in town you know, can improves considerably, that could bump us down. So at the, the lowest part you could get, if, if you know, Winston became the wealthiest community in the Commonwealth, um, then you would get that lowest match of 20%. Um, you know, well, while I'm rooting for that, I doubt, I doubt it's going to happen. <laughs> okay. um, and it, it's, I think, as Mr. Dwart's highlighted, it's kind of a, a fairly nuanced process, and it's easy to get in the weeds yeah. on it. But and some towns fluctuate, like like uh, Monson that I talked to, um, theirs went up and down from 100% to like 60%. Like it moved all over the place for a while, and they're back up at 100% now. So, so things can happen in valuation and population that can affect where you stand. And since the start of this program, the state has had the money to fund it. Every time. Every yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the first round is 80% that everybody gets a share, their share of 80% of what the fund is. And then the second round is, uh, I think 20%. And then there's the surplus round, which is the last round. Okay. And I guess in terms of the, the source of that funding, do you care to get into that at all? That's, that's based on, um, the registry of deeds. When, oh yeah, the tax stamps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so that that's kind of the ultimate irony of this is, and I think one one example that came up recently was like, well, we're not Wellesley Farms, so you know, so why why would I'm we, sorry, we're to that stage of the night where it's mumbly. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, by example, someone will say, well, you know, Winchinin is not Wellesley Farms. You know, why would we need this type of program? But I think the ultimate irony of this is the people of Winchinin have been paying in, into this and funding this program since since it's existed for the past 21 or 22 years and have not reaped the benefits. So winchinen has been paying into it. The people of Winchinin have been paying into it, but Wellesley Farms has been taking money out of it. Um, so it's Lexington, Concord, Cambridge, everybody in that kind of center, I think, when the program first started. But if you look at, at the map from the state over the years, it's really expanded. So even like our neighbor Royalston has implemented this. They have it in place. Um, so whether or not Winchinin passes the CPA, the community is still paying into that fund. Sorry for the mumbles. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it happens every time. Um, hold on that, hold that thought. Uh, anything, any further questions on the recommendation of the Exploratory Committee? I do have one more, and I'm sorry yes, to make Mrs. this take LaPointe. longer. Um, what kind of oversight is there or stuff written into the process about, like, if a project fails or if an owner doesn't, you know, take the steps and, and keep the project going and completed? 
I can't specifically answer on the oversight except for that this thing is super nuanced and controlled that I can't imagine something's going to squeak through and not fulfill its obligation. Okay, okay. That's something I can look up and get back to you, though. I could speak to it a Mr. little Joe bit Manager? as well. So in my experience, in my previous community, for any community preservation project, we had there was pretty much an annual reporting requirement. So when, you, when the time comes to close out the project, you're communicating with the representative from the state, and they're ensuring that you did it by the book. OK. Thank you. Thank you. There's, there's people at the state to call, always available for the committee to find out what, what fits within the parameters and stuff, and, and they're really helpful. Great. Thanks. Any further questions on the recommendation of the committee? All right. Mr. Ward, you had a question about the date? Okay, my, I now turn this to the town manager. So I understand that to hold a town meeting on average costs about $4,000. Mm -hmm. So we're holding a special town meeting for one article. When less, just two months of, from that date, we have an election and a town meeting in May. So why can't we do it then? And the reason I, I say that is by doing it in March, we're, we're putting a $4,000 cost on the town that we don't have to because we got one coming up in two months. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our voters go away for the winter. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be here to vote on this at town meeting in March. And I mean, this, I support this, but it is $72.36 more on their taxes and they're not going to have a say, but they will be here in May. So why can't we do it in May? And the, town, and the state doesn't say you have to do a town meeting first and then a ballot. The, it's the it's state totally does. up to you to do I, either one. Sure, so it's, if I could answer first and then I'll hand it over to Mark if that's okay. Um, so I think you bring up, bring up a valid point is that people do have a deserve or deserve um, or have a right to vote on that and they would because the town meeting vote isn't putting it in place, the town meeting vote is authorizing it to appear on the ballot in May when everybody's back in town. Um, but, I, but I do understand your point there. Um, and the other piece, which I think Mr. Dwart would like to speak to maybe a little bit as well, is the, the timing requirement. Um, but I think another component, and this was earlier on in, when the committee was meeting, but um, concerns that this topic could potentially get buried or lost in a larger meeting. Um, and I think um, the intention, at least from where I sat, was that it would provide Winchin and residents an opportunity to come out and discuss this topic. It's not going to get slipped in between a giant annual budget and, you know, five other, you know, things that might be going on. Um, I believe that was the intent. And I don't know, if, Mark, if you'd like to add anything to that or any other thoughts. Well, I mean, we, we, there's two options on how you can present this to the public. You can just do a petition, I think it is, and get it put on the ballot immediately where we can go through the requesting that it be put on the ballot, in which case you're using that forum to advertise and educate the public about it, and you're drawing a much more attention to it, and it's been a successful way that other towns have gotten it done. And I, I think, I don't, Justin, like, there's not enough days to do what you were talking about doing, because you have to, it's like 35 or 40 days between a town meeting and when it's on the ballot. So if you, if you go past that time frame, then you can't put it on the ballot anymore. You would have to call a special ballot vote, and you'd be paying for that. I don't, I don't believe yeah. we have a ballot vote coming up. Not after May. Within range of the other meeting Not that we're talking about fall. already having. So that's why we have to have a separate special one. Why? I'm not clear on that, because the election is the beginning of May. Right. It can be on that ballot. Mm -hmm. And then the town meeting's later in the month. So what, what is the time crunch we're not meeting? Oh, on the back end? Oh, oh. well, here. Uh, what is the, cr I, I, I guess, the crunch? I guess, well, I guess here's the answer, and I, I understand that I get a little, a little perturbed in. by this one. But depending on the timing, I don't think if you had the ballot vote, I don't think we could turn around and advertise and plan for the annual town meeting in time. Because by the time you have the ballot vote, we've already, the warrant is already baked, mm -hmm. effectively. Um, and so I think that's part of the component, but I, I mean, I do understand the concern. I would hate to needlessly expend funds for this purpose, but it is something that's budgeted. 
Uh, um, I'm not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it. It can be done that. in May. It mm -hmm. can be done in May. Um, refresh my memory. The election is when? The first Tuesday? The first Monday in May. First Monday in May. May 1st. May Day. Can I ask if you're, if you're not yes. going to vote to put it on a special town meeting, can you beforehand provide us a, a name for the, what it's going to be called on the ballot so that signs can be put up and advertising can be done? What the, what the name of the initiative is? Can you, can you reserve initiative one or oh, what I'm saying? I understand. I understand. So if it was like support question one, like that type. Yeah. <clears throat> so ideally it would be the only question. Um, so can you so reserve question one? Before, beforehand, before it's officially on the ballot, and that, that way the committee can get started doing its job? Yeah, and admittedly. Then, and then I'm we can satisfy Mr. Ward's concern about the $4,000 in special meeting? I'm unsure how, how question numbers get assigned, to be honest. This is a teachable moment for me. So I will, uh, I will, get, an, I will get an answer and try to figure that out, but that's a, a good question. I mean, it seems like you could just we could just decide, right? Mm. <laughs> Where would the funding come from said signs? Uh, that is over my pay grade. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would think it I'm may have to be that privately out there. donated. I don't think the town could. I'm sorry, say again? I would think it would have to be privately donated. I don't think the town could fund that. For what? Oh, for signs? Yeah, if there were like signs to support it. Like for example, to support the fire station signs, those are privately funded. Privately funded. Like we don't, we don't touch um, that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Where would potential funds come for a potential special town meeting? So that so we always budget for an extra town meeting and an extra ballot vote. Uh, we carry that every year just because you don't know what might happen and you might need to do that. So and is that being eaten not, up by the fire station? Uh, so the ballot vote is, but the town meeting is not. Okay. So it, it might be hard to get private donations for signs if we don't know if it's going to be on the ballot or not. I think we're putting yeah. the, heart, the cart before the horse. Let's figure mm. out how this vote goes. Yeah. And then. Okay. So, so I think if we were to, uh, Mr. Ward, if, if we were to like map it out. So what, did you say the election was the first or second Monday in May? First. So first. first. So that would be, then that would be May 1st. So by example, if it was May 1st and then you had your annual town meeting on May 15th, which I, I mean, I suppose you could hold it later than typical to make sure you're you know, still within the same window. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, so realistically, I mean, that there'd be less than two weeks at that point by the time you got the results and tallied them when we actually found out Tuesday morning and then hit the ground running, there wouldn't be enough. By then we would have already alerted the constable to post the warrant. And so th that's kind of, I think, the timeline that we're trying to avoid b beyond the entire separate piece that, that I personally um, find value in and that there's value in doing it as a standalone item. Um, but that's just my opinion. But it would still be on the warrant. It could be on the warrant. We mm -hmm. just pass over it if it didn't, pa if it didn't get the votes. Y yeah, so if you had, if it was on the election on Monday the 1st, or wait, oh, wait, wait a minute, let me think about it now. I don't know if you could place it on the, functionally, I don't know how you would be able to place it on the ballot because there wouldn't have been a town meeting vote to place it on the ballot. Now that, now that I'm thinking about it. But you don't need it. It's, it's it would have to be done by, those by petition. In any order. We went through this a couple of years ago when we were doing the fire station mm. and the legal town council said, it doesn't matter if you hold the election first or you hold the town meeting. You can do it any way you want as long as you do those two, go through those two wickets. Mm -hmm. That's all that's Except required. Except the CPA law is very specific. So, that, you know. so I do agree with Mr. DeWart. The, the CPA rules are pretty specialized. I'm just going to try to pull it up right here in, in the moment if anybody has any other questions to kill time for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, <you> <laughs> I just said he unplugged oh. it. Well, um, so Mr. Sosbeck, you mentioned that in the budget, in the annual budget, we put we, we budget in one extra ballot, um, and then one extra town meeting because we don't know how they're going to fall. Mm -hmm. So Barbara pointed out that 
we, do, we, do, we use the ballot vote um, for the fire department, or will be, so that does leave already budgeted an extra town meeting. Mm -hmm. So you could say that this special town meeting would be covered so here we go. under that budgeted extra town meeting. But I point out, just because it's budgeted, is it a good use of money? I do understand. Mm -hmm. Yep. So here's the, here's the law. The, the final date for notifying or filing a petition with the city or town clerk or the secretary to place such a question on the ballot shall be 35 days before the city or town election or 60 days before the state election. So that may it says first it. doesn't give us enough time. Yeah. Right. And then so if we want to go the other route, if the legislative body does not vote to accept sections three through seven inclusive, well, that's what the vote is, uh, at least 90 <laughs> days before a regular city or town election or 120 days before a state election, then a question seeking said acceptance through approval or a particular surcharge rate with exemption of blah, 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 blah. Let me see what, where the nut of this thing is. So, so Mr. The petition has to be signed by at least 5% of the registered voters at that point. So, so Mr. Ward raises a good point that like something like a fire station vote in the past, for example, like you have been able to do that, but you're playing by a different set of rules because that's based on an override or a debt exclusion, but CPA language specifically calls out the like very stringently the, the way that you have to go about um, the process of accepting it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate um, you really vetting that genuinely. Thank you. So could you go back to the, to the time frame, please? Okay. So if I can just recap, we talked about the recommendation of the Exploratory yeah, Committee. Talking We've talked about the procedure and the order that things need to be done. It would be a special town meeting warrant, and then we would have a special town meeting in March. And in the event it passes, then it will be added to the regular ballot in May. Mrs. Salter brings up a good point. We talked about how the town has budgeted for an extra town meeting. Um, is that a, the best use of that budgeted amount of money? My personal opinion, I think this is, I see both sides of this. It's, I don't feel that it is up to the board to decide whether or not the town does this. It's up to the voters, it's, it's up to the citizenry. What is up to the board is whether we feel it's worth spending that budgeted money on this issue. Kind of what it boils down to in my perspective. My uh, perspective. Madam Chair. This is the point. I move the board schedule a special town meeting for Monday, March 13th, 2023 at 7 p.m. to be held at the Murdoch Middle High School and to open the special town meeting warrant on Thursday, January 12th, 2023 at 8 a.m. and to close the special town meeting warrant on Thursday, January 19th at noon. I'll second it for discussion. All right, motion has been made and seconded for discussion. Mrs. Anderson. Are we limited to this one topic at our special town meeting, or could we maybe put other items on the warrant, other articles? I think if something's submitted, right? Y yeah. Citizens I mean, submit a petition. That's up to the will of the board. It's you, you call that. So yeah. that's, yeah. Because the, the warren will be open. I right. feel like, like we always do. Yeah. And it will be closed. You, you we'll, might not get the necessary quorum with the one article where if you made it worth going for, although, you know, not that the CPA isn't in an added tax, is also worth attending a special town meeting. But I feel like if we were to maybe you know, make a couple of the Warren articles on there. Give somebody a reason to get up out, out of their nice, warm, comfy chair. I, I think that's a in good March, which is cold. 
Yes. I, I think that's a good idea from our point of view because it's just more advertising opportunity for us because if you draw somebody else in for another reason, they're gonna become educated from our committee at that meeting, the town meeting. Yeah, I'm not so, sure if we I mean, have anything. And that $4,000, that's how I think that we, we see that as, as funding for our advertising campaign. We, we see the special town meeting as part of our advertising process based on all of our research on how it's been done in other towns and what's worked. So it's not just $4,000 for a logistic thing, it's $4,000 towards the benefit of our trying to get the town to do something that benefits the town. Any further discussion? I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. No, oh, I'm no, just going to say. <laughs> Any further discussion? Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. Also, I don't know why we can't look at. I, I'm concerned about the the uh, people who want the a lot of the senior citizens who don't stay here for the winter. Why can't we bring this up at the scheduled May town meeting, which requires a two thirds vote? just like the fire station did. But if we were to do something special, have a special election following this after we, get, after we secure the two-thirds vote, which is the most difficult. But, it, Madam Chair, could I just mm. bring up the point that I get they wouldn't be at the special town meeting, but if it should pass, they will get a ballot, and their voice can be heard on the ballot, correct? It's not that we're, you know, ignoring the snowbirds were really not. They get a ballot. Yeah. And I would yeah. just correct that it's a, a simple majority. I apologize. That's okay, Mr. Sospek, then Mr. Dover. Can, can I say something about that? Like, Go ahead. There's a lot of citizens that are ignored by other logistics of this town. You know, I'm, I'm in a military family and I've been somewhere else and the Board of Selectmen don't have remote meeting but I haven't been able to participate in meetings since we stopped doing that for the You're pandemic. To the and to focus just on one voter group as a deciding factor, it, it just seems un, unequal and capricious. I mean, we're not voting on the issue, we're voting on whether to put the issue up to the people. It's not a deciding meeting. The town meeting is to, to be able to put it on the ballot because for some reason or another, that's how the state decided that that's a hoop you have to go through in order to get this thing passed. All right. All set. Mr. Sosper. Thank you. And I just wanted to point out that it requires um, a simple majority, not a two-thirds. Majority vote. Okay, thank to you. To go on to the ballot? For the just ballot. to go on the yeah. ballot. Okay. Town meeting requires two-thirds. But, but the vote that really counts is I believe is town the meeting also requires a simple majority. Yeah. Simple majority as a, I, I thought it was two-thirds. Just thirds. for it to go on the ballot. Not for the seat, not for the committee to be formed, just for the question to go on the ballot. At this special town meeting that we're looking at doing potentially in March, that Warren article would only have to pass by a majority. Because it's only authorizing it to go on the ballot. It's not authorizing anything else. It's not expending money or anything or, or like the borrowing of money like you would see on a debt exclusion, for example. Um, <clears throat> and if and I will just say, if this, um, if the board places this, I'll confirm all of these aspects with legal counsel as well. We're going to have to when we go through the process anyway. Any further discussion? No, my head hurts. Could you put the motion back up, please? Okay. So we have a motion before us. It has been seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. And uh, folks, Opposed? Know, folks know that I support CPA totally, but I just don't, I don't think this is the right way of doing it. I think it should be in a regular setup, so I'll vote no. no. I'm a no. And so, so it does pass three to two. Thank you. Thank you, for, yeah, and thank you, committee, for all your work. I, I hope you guys can throw some other warrants on there and attract some attention. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So just to review the schedule, if you would, uh, back up a little bit. So the warrant will open on Thursday, January 12th. 
Um, it will close at noon on the 19th. We do have a holiday in there, so we've, it's extended. And then draft warrant to the selectmen on the January 23rd, the finance committee, um, January 31st, selectmen review, finalized warrant on February 6th. February 7th, finance committee, public hearing and recommendation. Monday, February 13th, the Board of Selectmen vote their article of recommendations, sent to the printer on the 21st, posted on February 24th, mailed on February 27th, and then the actual meeting itself, March 13th. Okay. Mrs. Anderson. What happens if there is no quorum? Uh, the, the vote cannot be held, which we've run into um, we almost ran into at a recent special. We ended up, you know, calling people and, and getting people out there. Um, but I'm confident, knowing this group and having sat in on their meetings for the past eight or nine months, that they'll be able to get a quorum out. Yeah, the, the same quorum requirements would would apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but every, every meeting, every meeting I've ever been to, we've been on the phone. We've been calling people to get in here. What if you can't? Mm -hmm get those people what happens then, I never I'm, I don't know are what you happens. asking if it's a new date and even more money expenditure yeah so I, I mean I would imagine the vote couldn't be held and and that I mean honestly the lack of turnout I think would speak for the issue itself in my opinion okay. um, yeah. Yeah, or well, it's snowy or a blizzard or whatever because yeah. it's right. March and yeah nobody wants to go out me uh. But I already know I can't make that date <laughs> because March 15th is a huge deadline oh. for taxes. Oh, yeah. oh so no I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, so that kind of took care of 8.2 as well, I believe. I okay. Isn't Miss Grout in Florida? Our town moderator? Uh, yes. she, she's, she's available. I've communicated with her. I'm sure she will her. be, but yep. I'm just saying. She's in Florida. Yeah. I saw it. <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you very much. Next up, 8.3, update on broadcasting equipment. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this memo has come forward um, from Mrs. Daigle, who's been working on this, this initiative. So I wanted to run through the group um, through her, on her behalf real quick. I, I didn't see a need for her to sit through the whole evening needlessly. So um, as you all know, we've been continuously working on the broadcasting equipment for some time now. Um, as with any project or initiative in town, it's tied into like not, not only the need for it, um, but also a way to fund it. And so the, the biggest holdup at this point um, is a matter of funding. And why we wanted to bring this before the board is we've um, shopped it around. We received an estimate for about $33,083. We got another estimate that was about within $100 of that. So we know that it's a, a legitimate figure. Um, that would help address a lot of the broadcasting equipment that we're using. Um, a lot of it's five, 10, or more years old, which as you know with technology, um, that, that's very old for tech, um, and a lot of the system is failing. So what we've run into is an inability, for example, um, to broadcast uh, live to the internet, which is something that we used to be able to do, and then it went down sometime around this past May. Um, and as we were working to address that, uh, we, you know, we also determined there were issues with the remote capabilities for Zoom and the ability to broadcast that. Now, some folks have come forward and correctly pointed out that you could just set up a phone on a tripod and do Facebook Live, which as a backup actually was done at a recent, um, I believe it was a teacher's um, or a school committee uh, debate. And the, the audio was, it was, it was just kind of really tough. Um, and the video quality wasn't great either. So. Um, but that, that point is taken from the community. But I think ultimately the purpose of this memo is to let the board know that if this is something that you would like to execute now, we could do, but the only available funding source would be ARPA funding. Um, we, through the communications committee, were able to get a new contract in place with Comcast, and a large part of that push was to try to get more infrastructure money in for broadcasting purposes, which we did succeed in doing. Um, that first check has come, but the problem is we can't expend that money until we have a vote of our body, um, 
which now that I'm thinking about it, if you're, look, if you're sniffing around for another article, there's one. Um, but we need a vote from our body to expend that money, basically. So if, you know, the, if the board has any interest, you could put it on that special in March. Um, if not, it would have to be something that would have to wait until July so that we can expend those funds. So um, basically to recap, the funds are available. In this exact moment, we can't use them, but we can use, our, we can use ARPA funding. Um, with a little bit of patience, you could use the PEG money as it was intended. Um, so I was just looking on direction from the board on that, or if there's anybody um, you know, present that has any thoughts on that as well, we're happy to hear them. Madam Chair. Yes, Mrs. Anderson. Um, <clears throat> I'm just speaking on behalf of the communication committee. We haven't even met for several months because we've been at a standstill since we signed the Comcast agreement. There, you know, there's been no movement. There's no reason to meet. We really need this equipment. We really mm -hmm. have to start moving forward. We should have Zoom capabilities. It was awful the other week. Awful. Um, this is stuff that in, you know, 2023, shame on us for not having it. Yeah, and I know that in the event that someone has to call into a meeting. Mm -hmm. Awful. Oh, the last time I called him, I could hear Rick. I could kind of hear you. Danielle was like a humming in the background. <laughs> um, so we, we need that capability for that remote participation. Mm -hmm. um, we need a good quality remote participation. With the equipment that you're looking at, provide that? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it, yes, it would. And admittedly, that's one area, and I think I've referenced it in other meetings too, but I'll reference it again in this moment. That's an area um, where we came up short, and I take responsibility for that. Um, you know, lack of funding is one component also, it's just frankly, it's not my specialty. Um, but I think this is an opportunity here, um, even though it took a while, I think we came to a good um, conclusion once we get that funding in place. And I, I do agree, I think that's an important resource. Um, it is 2023, um, and I think we need to kind of get with the times a little bit on that. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know you and I talked about the ability to uh, run closed captioning, mm -hmm. um, those sorts of, of accessibility issues. So, Madam Chair. Mrs. LaPointe. Mr. Town Manager, do you have a preference as to ARPA funding or the March special town meeting? Um, my, pr my preference would absolutely be the March special town meeting, um, just because, it, you know, for a few points. One, it's been down since May, um, so, you know, what's another month or two? Um, but the other piece is the, I would hate to use ARPA funding because it's more flexible, um, especially when we have money from Comcast um, that the communications committee fought for um, and that's literally specifically intended for that purpose if we can just wait to get to a town meeting to appropriate it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Do you need a vote from us tonight? Um, not necessarily. I mean, it, it, I guess if maybe you want to vote on a preference, that's fine, but you know, I would just verbal direction is fine. Um, also, I don't, once again, I don't know if there's, if if anybody wants to speak to anything or. I'd like to speak, Madam Chair, if I could. Um, actually, I, I saw Mr. Ford's hand first and then Mr. Dewart. Okay, so as we know. Uh, I'm sorry, just for the record, please state right. your name. Uh, Edward Ford, Edward Wayne Ford Jr. I am at uh, 273 Central Street. Uh, as we all know, I believe the pen is mightier than the sword. And I enjoy being like uh, the town choir kind of goofball. So uh, with that, I would request that I could have a Gmail address to uh, hook up a Facebook page and then uh, your camera access and uh, basically just run it as the Frog Prince Town Choir would be hilarious. And then you got uh, Facebook Live, which means we can talk about it after as we're going through our day and not have to be sitting here now. Um, I'd also like to suggest with this email address, I could donate uh, things like Minecraft or Xbox Live, and we could literally sit in our living room on our phone with a controller and play an animated character at this seat and, you know, have the audio with some glitches, yes, but recorded and documented. So we could really entertain the uh, children at Minecraft Daycare with <laughs> characters and have a very good time and you know sell ourselves a little bit better than sitting in front of a desk 
I no, think I some would argue that this room is already filled with characters. <laughs> so <laughs> we gotta we gotta be them, or we're never gonna be happy. Thank you, Mr. Dewatt. So it, it I'm sorry. Like, state your name for the record. Mark Dorwart. Thank you. It, it sounds like uh, everybody's for this thing, but I just want to speak. That I'm completely for it. Obviously, I've talked about remote meetings a lot. Every chance I get, pretty much get to town. Um, I've used it because my wife's in the military, and I've been out of town. And uh, something that hasn't been really talked about is that our town has a higher average of commute compared to the state average. Um, and it's only increasing between 1990 and 2000, it increased by 33%. Um, and you, you got to take into account that that mean includes people that work from home, which has increased too. So people are driving like an hour, hour and a half. And a lot of the, a lot of the things that come to this board are things that people are trying to do something. But a lot of what this board doesn't see are people that want to come here because they've had an issue forced upon them by the town. Um, or they want to get a pothole fixed or something and they don't have the time to come here or they think it's just going to be the same old, same old, so it's not worth coming to fight for. And they have to get their kids showered and fed yep. and it's on a Monday night, like the first day of the week, and they have to leave work early to get here. And we're considered a perfect example of a direct democracy which was created in 1630. Like the New England system was created in 1630. Like people walked or took their horses to town meeting at that time. And we're not effectively a direct democracy, like Mr. Ward's bringing up that people are going to Florida and they don't have a chance to vote here during the winter months, just like me being in a military family didn't have a chance to come to DOS meetings. But if we, if we wanna be a direct democracy in this day and age when circumstances have changed and it's hard for people to come to meetings, but we have this perfect technology, I mean, we need the well, hopefully we fund it right <laughs> but we have the ability to do that and we know from the pandemic that when people were able to come address things on zoom with bos meetings it's never been such a popular event as it was during the pandemic a lot of things mm -hmm. got done a lot of things got discussed um, we worked through some of the kinks you know you guys talked about the chats on the side and stuff like that that those are organic things that have to be worked through but but at the same time if you didn't notice there was an overflow room at town meeting and I think that there's a correlation between more people coming to BOS and participating and more people coming to the town meetings to vote. And if we really truly wanna be a direct democracy and serve everybody in the town, this thing is, is it's a no brainer. Like the, the amount of money it's gonna save by addressing issues quick, more quickly and getting things done and allowing you guys to talk about actual substantive if you, issues instead of like people having to fight for things to happen or, or think about people not coming to address things. There's a lot that, that nobody comes to address because it's not feasible. They're not gonna leave work an hour early to get here. Yep. So anyway, I'm all for it, direct democracy. That's all I wanna say. I'm, I'm sorry, you've already spoken on the issue, Mr. Ford. Um, your point is taken, and I know that, you know, when we first came back to open meeting after having to do Zooms, um, I, I agree, I noticed it during the, the Zoom. It, it was from, the person running the meeting point of view on a Zoom, it's challenging. But I think that we need to look at how we can get more of the citizenry involved, yeah. whether it is through um, a controlled Zoom meeting or this or that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe we can, uh, can we broadcast our, our meetings? You know, you talk about the commute you know, people in their car. Can we get it on the radio or something? I don't know. Can we, can we get a bunch of radio well, I'm channel? saying it's hard to get people to a meet. It's hard to get people to a meeting, not just to watch it, but just to come <laughs> when they meet. Can you imagine a podcast? I want a podcast. Yeah. Technically, all we need is email address and questions. So, thank you, Mr. Dolan. Yep. Um, Madam Chair, if I, yes. could, if I could recommend just looking at timelines. Um, so realistically, so if this thing went to the special in March, so it wouldn't be funded until March and we probably wouldn't be able to implement it and roll it out until mid-April, give or take. So between now and April, um, I do think there's some work that could be done, um, potentially if this board wanted to um, recommend the issue to the um, communication committee, uh, perhaps like a remote participation policy or something along those lines that could be recommended from that committee to the board for your review. Um, 
I mean, Mrs. Anderson, you represent them. I don't know if they uh, would have any interest in reviewing that, but what other communities have implemented since um, remote participation kind of came crashing into our worlds uh, mm -hmm. during COVID, I think there might be value in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, good point. Um, I'm fine with putting it on the ballot. It would give us another ar article on the ballot. Okay. And it's obviously something that's near and dear to everybody's heart. And so I think that would be good, personally. You mean on the warrant? Warrant, yes, the ballot. I beg your okay. pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. thank you, Annie, sorry. On the warrant. Okay. Next up, update on special municipal employee list and vote. Mr. Soltzbach. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is largely the same memo as last time. The, the facts surrounding it haven't particularly changed. I did want to call out um, some revisions in red real quick, um, switching to part-time officers of fire and part-time police officers. Um, one thing that did come up that I also wanted to address was in the last meeting, the question of whether, you know, what if there's a scenario where a teacher or a school employee got elected to the school committee that's actually already not allowed by law under Mass General Law. And so I amended the recommended motion just to um, quell those concerns um, and put that in there. Uh, another piece, um, Madam Chair, was at, at your direction, I had reached out to legal counsel um, and requested their, their opinion on one of the outstanding questions, which was that there is a 1963 list and a 1984 list and whether or not that 84 list um, kind of overrode that 63 list. So based on the two lists that pro were provided and minutes from that era, legal counsel provided um, the opinion, which I emailed to the board and also provided hard copies in advance of the meeting, um, that highlights ef effectively that the where the 1984 vote doesn't specifically state um, you know, whether or not it's supplanting the 63 vote, um, it's their opinion that in order to remove something from the 63 vote, there would have had to have been a specific vote calling for its removal, in so many words, based on their response here. Um, and so, re I mean, realistically, that, that was a concept that was provided at the last meeting. This is just additional backup at the request of the chair. Um, but beyond that, I don't have anything else to add at this time. Thank you. Um, for my own edification, uh, I did look, I did review the minutes of the 19th, uh, December 19th meeting um, that I was unable to attend. Um, but for clarification for, for others perhaps as well, could you explain the process if someone falls under this special municipal employee category? Mm -hmm. What are the checks and balances as far as performances within the duties or, or anything you can explain on that please? Sure. So a lot of what I heard, I've heard in the community between that last meeting and today, and in fact, even during citizen business time at the beginning of this meeting. Um, Slower, please. Sure, thank you. Um, is the, the thought that the board is, is trying to implement something new um, or to you know, put something new in place. Um, and, that, and that belief, unfortunately, is an error. This is something that had been in place um, when, when JFK was in office. Um, it's, it's pretty much a reaffirmation of the existence of those lists um, in the same way that they reaffirmed it in 1984. Um, it's kind of a, a similar dynamic. So um, I think to, to drill down just as a review for anybody who's tuning in for the first time that's fresh on this topic, um, basically what it's doing is um, creating a, a monitored legal avenue for individuals who may hold multiple roles within a community, which um, you would typically see in a community that's of smaller size, and, you know, not looking to, to debate where Winston would fall within that category, but just as fact, the reason that it exists. Um, and so oftentimes you'll see overlap, and in fact, we, we see it here in town. Um, Attorney Siragu called, it, called out in his email that it, it's pertaining to the role and not to individuals. Um, so that's always just a reminder. You're not, we're not taking one person that is on our payroll and saying this person can do whatever they want um, or they can hold multiple roles or they can, you know, they can be an employee of the town but sit on a board and vote to give themselves a raise. That, that is not something that could occur. Um, and in fact, any gaps that would arise in that scenario are covered 
in modern times um, by the State Ethics Commission, the code of ethics that all municipal employees and volunteers need to follow um, in the Commonwealth. So it would allow basically for saying someone who is a full-time employee, for, ex for example, for the town of Winchenden to serve on a board or committee is a good example. It would allow them to do that. It would not allow that person to sit on a board or committee that could vote on something that would impact their salary. And, and as a matter of fact, even on this own board, when we run into those issues, it's oftentimes disclosed to err on the side of caution, even, even times when it's not even close, but for the sake of appearance, if there's something that could maybe barely even you know, sniff the wrong way, um, people make a point of disclosing it. And so by process, what this would do is reaffirm the vote that was taken in 63, reaffirm the vote that was taken in 84. If anything, I would say the vote the board is taking this evening is tightening up and removing some of the roles um, that were made available in 63 and 84. Um, and then the final piece of that is it's, it's formalizing a system where employees or volunteers of the town that fall within that category are legally required to, form, or, uh, to file what's referred to as a Section 20A form, publicly disclosing um, and putting on file for public record with the town clerk's office as an extra layer. So if there's anybody that's doing anything wrong, they're hiding it. They're not going to go out of their way to publicly disclose it in a public forum on a publicly available list. Um, with the town clerk's office, and, and I think that's kind of the, the important piece to highlight. I understand um, why some folks may be leery of the existence of such a thing, but it, it's commonplace, and it's governed um, by the State Ethics Commission. Thank you. I find it interesting. Um, when I first looked over the, the list from 1963, um, the people in the position, not the people, I beg your pardon, the positions that at the time they felt. Um, and I remember Mr. Duplis um, and Mr. Duty and Mr. Oh. Well, I do. I know everybody <laughs> on these lists. I go back I that far. Come Just on, like the, man. Oh, yeah. A blast from the past. Um, I'll open it up to the. Uh, the board, questions, comments? You want me to start? <laughs> Mrs. Anderson. Okay, I'll start. <clears throat> um, I really, I, I would beg to differ that this vote is merely an affirmation of the 1963 or 1964 um, votes because if it was an affirmation, then we wouldn't really need to vote at all, would we? Yet we needed a new vote for, for a member who is serving on two committees and is a, a public employee, correct? Uh, as a point of correction, that was because we were under the impression that the 64 and 80, or excuse me, 63 and 84 vote didn't exist. Had we had access to that at the time, and I did ask the, our current modern day clerk, I'd ask if this was on file, and she said to her knowledge it was not. So, so it's a, it's, it is a moot point. So after the fact, um, now that we do have it, I wouldn't have even brought it forward. All right, so let me, let me go one step further and explain to you that our form of town government has changed substantially since 1963, where there was no town manager at all. The, board of, the town was literally run by the people and the Board of Selectmen made those determinations as they needed to. And, um, and they were paid at the time to do so. Um, by 1984, that list probably changed because you went from the, the Board of Selectmen being the executive to a town administrator, is my understanding of the history of it, who did not have as much power, I'm sure you know, and I don't have to explain to you the difference between a town manager and a town administrator, right? And now we currently have adopted the town manager form. Um, so our form of government has not been the same. So those votes and those lists can't be the same because the, the duties and responsibilities have changed let alone the population has changed, everything has changed. And it's, it's just stupid to think that this is just an affirmation. It's, it's nonsensical. And may I one up it one more time, 
<clears throat> you still have the floor. Because as I read the charter, and there are pieces of the charter and bylaw that, that, that <clears throat> really don't like this. Um, and, and, and in that it, it kind of contradicts this particular situation. Um, I think that it really is not in the power of the Board of Selectmen to choose to do this. And I would put that on, on the special town meeting warrant, let the people choose. Their form of government, it's not ours, that we don't determine who's a special employee and who's not, I don't think. Your point's taken. Um, I will just point out to you though, Barbara, on the 1963, um, I mean, I don't know at what point we brought in a town manager or a town administrator. Kate Fallon was our first town manager. Well, you give me the year. I was, cause, no, I was here and I remembered because it, we were very impressed that they hired a woman 84. to do it. She was our first one. Well, what year? I, I believe it was either 80, I don't know if she came in in 83, but 84. She was the first one. I'm positive about that. Was she a town administrator or a town manager? Town manager, from town manager. That was her title. Okay. And actually, I was just going to point out on the list from 1963, it does list a town manager committee. A committee. Correct. Not a town manager. That is correct, because they were saying that a town manager would not be a special employee. They were excluding mm -hmm. that position from that designation. But the, in my mind, the fact that it references a town manager committee as being a But a town manager employee. committee is not a town manager. I ac agree. But this list is the, the people who would fall under the special employee designation. Not, it doesn't list all the positions in town, it just lists the positions that at the time they fell, fell under that special uh, employee designation. I think Unless it's, it's, it's it really wrong. inappropriate, and again, and um, no. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Yes, Mr. Dorwart. Dorwart, I'm sorry, the accent is on the first syllable, right? Dorwart, Dorwart, Dorwart. Okay. <laughs> Equal accent, I guess. Um, I see this as essentially an exemption for a conflict of interest law. I'm sorry. I, I, I view this as exemption. an exemption for a conflict of interest law. And if it's such a good idea and such an open and earnest thing to do, why is it taboo for uh, the committee to just come out and tell the public who it's affecting and, and who it makes a difference for? Why can't we name those people? Why can't we name publicly the employees that have this conflict of interest that we want to exempt if it's, if it's such a good idea to have the exemption, why is it taboo to state their names publicly and let the public know what exemption is going on? I don't believe, it's not that it's taboo, but it's, it's similar to um, when you identify a position rather than an individual. Okay, can we, can we list the positions? Yes, and that's what this is we're asking. If you could scroll down, Mr. Town Manager. Awesome. These would be the positions, and then it's public knowledge who would fill those positions, and then anyone who would fall under this category would have to file, uh, and such like that. So you're, so you're still hesitant to name the people? No, not at all. Can I'm we not. do that? I'm sorry? Does it affect anybody, a relative of anybody in this room right now? Can I ask that question? I, I, don't, I don't know if, all of them. If it's such a good idea, why can't we just say it? Respect. If it's so honest and so above board, why can't we just say it? Why can't we just say it? So, so there's a couple points to that, um, Mr. DeWart. Um, so, so one of them is uh, there's a, a fine line in terms of calling out employees specifically as an employer. Uh, that, that we walk fairly carefully. So I think you can note in the language that legal counsel used, um, they, they do the same thing. They, they take the time to highlight specifically this is about the roles and not the individual. Um, and I think that's out of the sake of fairness that, that typically there's an effort made not to call out specific employees on specific issues. Um, 
without giving them or affording them the opportunity of a review in executive session, for example. And so it's, it's just past precedent, and I understand, and I, I get that it seems um, I, silly to you, but, like, but I'm, I'm not going to go venture out and just listen. I understand what you're saying. Could, could, we, do, could we do a cross line from, from what position they volunteer in and what position they hold? Sure, but, but, could but do, I just Could we do a correlative list like that? If like, could we say that the Registrar of Voters is also on X board? Like, could sure. we say she's on the Finance Committee? Yeah, so if you'd like to, say how, however. Um, Can we say that she's married to the Vice Chair of this board? Sure, so uh, your point is Those taken. Those are all just positions. I, I understand it, but it's a courtesy. But the point is, um, and I think the point that they're trying to make, and, and I just want to reiterate, like, when this list um, was filed in 63 oh, and again in 84, and, and if this vote passes and would get filed again, it goes to the Inspector General's office themselves. So it's, it's not us trying to like do a workaround. It's us working in conjunction with the Inspector General. So if there were ever like some Whether type of, here, if right? I could finish my thought, if there was some type of, you know, grand conspiracy going on to defraud the people of Winchin and I think delivering it directly to the Inspector General's doorstep, <laughs> right? So like, so that's part of it. Um, but I think the other piece is too is that. But it is an exemption of a conflict of interest law. Why was that conflict of interest law put into law so right. long ago? And why are we exempting it now? Like, what is the real reason? Sure. So it's not us that's exempting it. It's the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Why? why so why? Why the is the it, Inspector General's office? Why is it? Why is it in front of us then now? Sure. So what I would offer is okay. what I would offer is in terms of the why. Um, clearly, the the Commonwealth and the Inspector General didn't write this exemption into law with Winchin in mind. They wrote it into law because it was clearly an issue that came up regularly enough about, among other municipalities in the Commonwealth, which it included, so that, that they realized that they couldn't write a law that was so constrictive that it would pretty much invalidate the participation of, of uh, a substantial chunk of volunteers and communities. That's especially. what we're salad about laws, because you could do that to every law. It's not designed for this place specifically. The but Constitution wasn't designed for I Washington. understand that. We're sovereign citizens. I mean, come on. No, okay. I, I get that, Mark, but through the, through okay. the chair. I, okay. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. But the public should know what Thank we're you. talking about. Um, you want it? Yeah, thank you. Um, just one note on the list um, town charter, um, section 3 2 on page 7, under appointment powers. Um, the verbiage says a person shall not serve concurrently as a member of more than one of the following multiple member bodies, planning board, board of appeals, or the conservation commission. Now those three are listed as a special em exemption, special employee exemption. Sure, so that's an excellent- Does that charter Verbiage. Sure, my, my apologies for speaking over you. So that, that's, that, that's, an, that's an excellent example of like what was brought up with the school committee thing. So this doesn't, this doesn't supersede um, mass general law. It doesn't supersede our local bylaws, for example, um, or charter. So if, if we have a rule that's more restrictive than what's in place here, then that still applies. This isn't authorizing those people. They, they would still have to abide by our bylaw and charter, it's an umbrella document, effectively. So um, in the same way that, you know, there, there could be a federal law and the state could make something, um, or rather a state law, and on a local level, we could make it more restrictive if we really want to on a local level, as long as we're meeting the threshold from the state. Um, it's the same thing. So if you're putting this in place, it's not gonna allow somebody to disregard our bylaws or our charter, by law. But, um, but, but is it not confusing to say, well, this paper says this, and then the charter says something well, different? Well, yes and no, but, but I think if there's an instance where if somebody felt there was um, something improper going on, then there's always the Inspector General's office, right? And if, the inspect if, you, if you submitted something and the Inspector General found that there was um, something going on that shouldn't be or someone was at fault, then the Inspector General will hold that person accountable. But I think if the Inspector General, you know, reviewed a specific situation, didn't find anything improper was going on, then you could move on and it would be fine. And then, I have one more question because yeah, I have concerns you. about the Registrar of Voters because we had an issue, mm -hmm. and poll workers, 
as well as all the election workers being special employees. That's a very big concern, and, and a lot of people throughout the country would have that concern. And I don't think I'd be comfortable until I called maybe um, Bill Gavin's office and found out really what that answer is because, you know, we've had somebody resign because in, in it wasn't a very nice resignation either. Mm. And remember that I could, because I did, and I said, boy, we are really looking to step into it, and I think it's a bad idea. And I agree with that, and I think I would encourage you to take that approach, and I don't mind, you know, on, on your behalf, I can do it through our office, you can do it as well. Um, and, you know, I would encourage anybody, if they feel at any time there's something improper going on in our town government, please, please report it. Um, put in a paper, and let's see what the state has to say about it. And, and if there's something going on, I, I assure you they're, they're going to ferret it out. Um, I would encourage any, any member of our community to do that. But I think before we vote on it, we need these answers. We need to have this stuff clarified in front of us. Because without it, again, we're working without all the information. That, and, and um, you know, you're, you're making an uninformed decision. I think that's a bad idea. But we're making the decision based on the position and not the people is the point. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about positions. Haven't we listed them all? No. They're not all listed, are they? Well, we already brought stuff up about those positions. And there's more questions there that are on the list that we have questions about. Very on this list? Those serious. boards that you mentioned from the charter aren't employee positions. Those are boards. They get special employee status. They already have special employee status. It would, it would retain yeah. their special employee status. Excuse me? Sorry, it was just a clarification that they wouldn't get special employee status. They already have it. This, this would just reaffirm that. No, they well, conservation has it because we gave it to them. No. They already had it from 84 and from 63. I don't think you're right. I think there's still a lot of questions about this, that we better get this right. Isn't that what, the, isn't that what town Ms. council's opinion said? That mm -hmm. Really? Because they've never been wrong before. Yeah, but you know what? We pay them to give us an opinion, and if we pay someone to give us an opinion and then say you're not right, then why are we bothering with town council? Without doing our own due diligence? That's our I'm not an attorney, okay. so I, yep. I, just, All right. I can't do due yep. diligence for that. Um, yeah, Mr. Ward. Beyond me. Madam Chair. Okay. Yes. Uh, just a few items. First of all, I heard it say that the selectmen shouldn't be doing this. It should be town. Let the town people do but it. it. But the law says that special municipal employees assigned to certain municipal positions by a vote of the Board of Selectmen, Board of Aldermen, Town Council, or City Council. And this is general law, and it's all spelled out. What we're looking at tonight is an administrative action, no matter how you want to look at it. In 1963, in, 19, in 1984, Two boards of selectmen unanimously approve these lists. They are both effective now, and all these people on the list are currently special municipal employees. That has not changed. The legal counsel has told us it has not changed. Common sense tells you it has not changed. Even in 84, a town manager gave the list but had to go to the selectmen to get approval for it because the selectmen have the authority. It doesn't matter what form of government we have, whether we have a town manager or we don't. A town manager coming into a town does not overrule the votes of the Board of Selectmen. We hire the town manager. These, these votes from 63 and 84 are still valid. I went through every one of these, uh, these positions that the town manager submitted and I compared them with the 63 and 84 vote to make sure that he wasn't slipping in anybody who wasn't Thank already God. from 63 and 84. Every one of these, 90% of them were on the 63 list and a few others came in 84. But he has not had anybody to this who isn't already a special municipal employee. The fact that we voted one several weeks ago was a mistake. We should not have voted that because they were already municipal employees, special. 
we vo it was after that fact that the town manager found in the files that we already had this. They were already a special municipal employees. So we didn't have to do that vote. We're not doing anything new. We're just what yeah, we're we doing. Yeah, we are. No, because we're not. All right. Okay. We're, we're, taking, with the we're taking the two lists okay. and making it one so it's easier to monitor, and we're bringing it up to date because the town manager did take out the vague statement that, and this applies to all part-time employees, which he thought was too generic, too, too broad a scope. So he took that out. He also took out some of these positions that no longer exist, like Gypsy Moss Superintendent. That's still a problem, though. Mm. So <laughs> now, does it have everybody in here? No. Doesn't have the Recreation Commission. Maybe that will have to be added down the road. It doesn't have the committee that's going to come out of the CPA if, we, if that gets approved by the town. Maybe that will have to be added down the road. This is just bringing together the two forms, that the two votes that were already taken. One was even recommended by a town manager if that's a concern. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Obviously a lot. Um, what is the pleasure of the board? I'd like to make a motion. Mr. Ward. I move that the board vote to designate those listed above as special municipal employees as permitted in MGL Chapter 268A, the Massachusetts Conflict of Interest Law, with the understanding that school employees are already not permitted to serve on the school committee by law, superseding previous lists submitted in 1963 and 1984, and further direct the town manager to notify the town clerk of this updated list. I second that motion. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? I have a discussion. Mrs. If Anderson? somebody is currently in violation and I call um, after this vote is taken, because the vote is just taken tonight, they're still subject to discipline, correct? It's still, still, still they're special. Violation. They're special, whether we vote this or not. Oh, baloney. So, so once again, I would if there's anybody, if you if you know, please, of anyone that's in violation, please let me know. Um, you know, I, people should be held accountable. It's a matter of the public trust. So, if you're aware of anything, please notify my office or reach out to the state. I'll reach out to the state. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 No. Chair votes aye, and we have one no. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in that. Um, where are we? Uh, old Murdoch update. Mr. Saltz back when you're ready. Thank you, Madam Chair. So as mentioned in a previous meeting, we did um, secure a qualified contractor to do the temporary repair work at the old Murdoch. Um, we had estimated that it was about 40,000 and we found somebody that was about 16,000 under. So that work um, is now complete. It was completed by Quality Restoration Inc. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go out there and take a look at it, um, they did a, a pretty clean job. As you can see, it, it secures everything, any falling debris, and it also keeps the moisture out throughout the winter, which is the whole goal. Um, beyond that, I just wanted to give the public an update in terms of a timeline for the next year or so, because I think a lot of people are kind of curious where are we at with that. So um, unfortunately, it wasn't a matter of receiving the funding back at the, the annual town meeting in 2021 and then just going right to work. We had to secure an owner's project man manager because of the value of the contract by Mass General Law. Um, after that, we went through a process to secure a designer architect there was one piece that I wanted to bring attention to the board in terms of something that, that I recently um, became aware of that's changed, and that is that Russo Bar Associates, um, who is the architect for the project, has um, recently been acquired by SoCoTech. Interestingly, SoCoTech is the parent company of CBI Consulting, the group that is our OPM firm. Um, 
So I personally don't have any concerns about this. Um, they're from entirely separate divisions, and they're, they're still kind of um, a check and balance there. I have sent it off to legal counsel for review just in case. Um, I feel like we have an obligation just to, to cover the town's interest um, to make sure there aren't any issues there. So um, I would anticipate that they would have um, a similar reaction, but I just want to be sure. Um, and I wanted to make everyone aware of that. So with that aside, um, what we're looking at for a timeline is with our allowable budget of one and a half million dollars, the OPM phase one, the architect phase one, two, and three, as well as the emergency repairs that we just did, we should have about a million dollars left in hand for construction costs. So we're going to be, do, uh, we're going to be doing the design throughout this winter. It's going to be going out to bid um, as early as March. And then based on the contractor's availability, they could start pretty much as early as you know, April um, but no later than June. That's something they're going to have in the RFP. So you're going to see um, that building dressed with scaffolding um, and masons up there, um, as well as roofers working on the slate roof this summer. It is going to happen. Um, from there, the next step would be securing, or I guess identifying how much phase two is going to cost and then securing that at the special town meeting coming up in the fall. Um, if that is appropriated and that work is complete, I would say um, going, that would probably follow the same pattern of being designed through the winter, carried out in the summer, and then once again, we'd come back um, for a third tranche, uh, depending on what phase three would look like, and then the old Murdoch will be complete. Um, so that's probably like a, a three-year um, <laughs> project, but um, in terms of the immediate, going out to bid in March, and it will be physically worked on this summer. And just to confirm, we're getting the design um, we, we've talked about this in previous meetings and with previous projects. We want to make sure we have a firm number in place. So the, the, the design that you're referring to will give us workable design and then we, so we know when we go out to bid that, I, I realize it's contingencies, but mm -hmm. we're going to have a fairly pretty firm number. Sure, yep. So we're, we're um, committed to going through the design bid build process, which historically we hadn't been doing in recent memory in town, which put us in the unfortunate position of having to repeatedly go back to the taxpayers asking for more money for projects, um, which we will not be doing anymore. Um, firm commitment right now. So we, we want to make sure before we're going to the people of the town that we know definitively what this thing is going to cost. Um, and so this is going to allow us to do that. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything, questions, comments on the old Murdoch? Nope. All right. Uh, next up, the town manager's report. Mr. Sulzbeck, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, one piece listening to this really quick, that, and I appreciate Vice Chair Ward um, for reminding me, was to bring forward the list of requests we have this year that we submitted this fall to the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation. Um, so as you can see, there are five self-contained breathing apparatus replacements. That's actually something that's on our capital plan that we're trying to get off of it if we can get it funded in a different source. It's a pretty big expense. Um, that project has been vetted extensively. It almost landed last year, um, and Chief Smith agreed to push it back one more year. But I would say anything after that, we're kind of pushing it. Um, a 2023 Volvo backhoe for the Department of Public Works. Um, the schools have a, a dual enrollment um, enrichment activities, which is, is pretty typical. I think last year it may have been laptops. Um, the library, so just a, a little bit of extra contingency for phase two for the sprinkler system, and that was basically um, the expense to move things downstairs into the basement that, that wasn't foreseen. Um, for the rec department, about 15,000 for holiday decorations for the street light poles. We've seen a lot on that um, on social media, you know, people hoping for something to get up there in the holiday season once that project is complete. Um, another $20,000 request from the recreation department to help supplement the grand opening and fireworks. The council on aging, $35,000 for a new transportation van for Meals on Wheels. Their current van um, is usable, but it's starting to get to that tipping point where you're kind of better served um, not, not um, continually maintaining or replacing something. Um, Mrs. Anderson, did you have a question? I feel like we just bought that. Mm. I, can, I can look into that and we'll see how, how old it really is. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Um, I'd be confused, I don't know. The uh, 
our moderator had requested two granite benches for Grout Park. Before, before we move off that, sure. I, I recognize this is not town money. Mm -hmm. um, however, when I see that, I swallow a little bit because it is the town manager, I'm sorry, the town moderator, mm -hmm. who is Mrs. Grout, right. requesting money. I realize it's a town park mm -hmm. also. I don't know, maybe just the way it looked, just my, my two cents. Sure, that, that's understandable. And um, for what it's worth, she did a, approach me and, and kind of, so it's you know quasi through my office, but it is kind of a standalone initiative, yeah. um, but I agree. Okay. Um, or, or I should say your point isn't lost on me. Um, for Public Works, new LED electronic message board, um, just to help get the word out whenever there's, you know, pipes down or you see everyone on social media, you know, like, why am I getting brown water? Um, Would that be like the, uh, the portable one? Is it, are you talking about like a permanent sign? For that, the new LED electronic message board. We're going to have to review that one and come back to it. Oh, one note what that's from? Oh, I understand. Public Works is requesting about for the amphitheater. Yeah, sorry. yeah there we go. There we, we, got, we got there. Um, so an, an entrance sign for the Winchin and Community Park. Oh, the park. Okay. Yeah, so that when there are like shows or things like that, it can be advertised um, so people driving by can see it. Is it going to be like the fire the fi station has a really oh, cool no, one? No, no. It'll be high speed like that? Uh, <laughs> so, um, oh, that's really... I enjoy the fire stations, but sometimes... <laughs> it's a little too flashy for my taste, but... Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a simpler. That's a good way to put it eye catching. Uh, but but something that will at least help kind of get the okay. word out. Um, additionally, um, security system funds just to expand at the amphitheater. The reason being that um, such a large investment is being made. Robinson Broadhurst did build some of that into the budget, but it, just something about that area attracts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we just want you know it's a good investment. It'll help us kind of hold people accountable. Yeah, um, definitely. For planning and land use, uh, Fall Fest, just requesting 10,000, increasing that. Um, for my office, the Beach Street Gateway Park, so $100,000. We do want to cover that on its own, but it would be, you know, we could get the job done, but in terms of, you know, to use Robinson Broadhurst phrases, the icing on the cake, like we wanted to do something substantial down there. Um, and that would be all through a public input process in terms of the final design of, um, of that. Okay. Yep. Um, Blair Square infrastructure design, so from soup to nuts, the total cost to design what's left, and we have made an investment to this point, but the remainder would be about $270,000. There is precedence um, through the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation with Central Street where they did help pick up some of that design cost, um, and that goes right back to wanting to have a shovel-ready project, um, and so we'll see how that goes. That, that could be phased out over a couple years. It kind of goes... Um, or it's, excuse me, sort of dependent upon the tip. Um, they fund construction costs, but not design cost. So we're, we're still pursuing the you know multi-million dollar tip initiative for construction costs, but we need to find some way to pay for the design. Yeah, and on that topic, if I can interrupt, I mean, it's been topic of discussion for for decades, um, Blair Square. I just want to make sure that you know as we're getting these pieces in place to actually accomplish something there, mm -hmm. um, that we have public input, public hearings. Um, you know, make sure that it's that it's out there in plenty of time for people. Full agreement. The um, the main goal there is to try to redesign that area in a way that works for the businesses there and it works for the citizens that, that walk there. And um, I think that's kind of an important piece. Uh, so I, I agree wholeheartedly there. I'd, I would want a lot of public input. Would it be feasible to ask whoever we go with go to for the design to give us a couple options or two options anyway instead of just saying here's here's our design it's a rotary yeah. and then we're going to go back to the drawing board per se you know maybe have them look at it from a couple different angles a couple different points of view so it's um there is an expense that comes with that understood um they do at a broader view before they really start getting into the details um sometimes for a fee they will give you some alternatives. Um, I think the roundabout piece is kind of been put to bed. Um, ju just, ba I mean, it's, it's based on you know feedback from the board and feedback from the public. I don't think there's much of an appetite for that, and so I, I personally wouldn't waste the funds going trying to go that route unless people felt a need to. You know, if there was a, a big call from the community that hey, we want a roundabout that I've yet to hear, um, then over it, then my it, dead body. Yeah, yeah. So you and me. Um, 
but okay. it's about your, yes, your point is taken. Um, Thank you. For uh, public buildings, elevator safety, about 19,000. So I touched on this briefly, but basically um, elevator code had changed and unfortunately um, for a lot of the municipal elevators we have, they are now out of code because of that. Um, as well as the, there's panels, there are like um, chipboards in the panels of the elevator that apparently create an issue um, for a firefighter call and could automatically close the door and effectively trap somebody in there, um, which it, it hasn't happened. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, as soon as that slipped out of my mouth, I was like, I, I regret that. But um, the state has given us an extension because I, I had reached out to them and explained to them like this is sort of a large cost. It's not typical for a community of our size to have as many elevators as we have, um, just by the nature of the you know the way this town was built originally and the and the way it ended up evolving. Um, so they did accommodate us. Um, our ele elevators have been inspected and passed, and we did get an extension. Um, so it's my hope that the Robinson Broadcast Foundation funds that, but I'm also going to build it into the capital plan just in case. Um, the community preservation act match for five years. So as we talked about, it would be about 90,000 for if they did that 1% piece. Um, 90,000 a year for five years. Uh, a full-time rec coordinate coordinator. So originally we had talked about part-time, um, which we presently have, and then slowly growing that. Um, but feedback we received from Robinson Broadhurst Foundation unsolicited from us is that they really want to support that amphitheater and they want to see it succeed. Um, and so they're willing to fund a full-time role there. So um, due to that, we- For one year or recurring? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So they, so this is for one year, but in the conversations we've had, they agreed that they would do it for several years. My, my only ask is to give us an opportunity to get on our feet here. I do agree it should be self-funding. Um, Ideally. But they, you know, like my ask to them basically is, can you do what you can to set us up for success here rather than failure? And they've been accommodating, so I appreciate I that. Okay. Um, the barn down there, just for an exterior rehabilitation, so this wouldn't be in and out, it would just be trying to fix up the outside and make it a little more presentable. Can you put windows? Yeah, what, what if we don't get that money? We gotta, we gotta at least have There's windows. There's gotta be something, window. yeah. So um, I, I think even at minimum, like the plywood covering the windows is half painted white, so like, like we'll, we'll be doing something. <laughs> Um, it yeah, we'll yeah. make we'll Mickey Mouse it a little bit just to get us through. Um, but we do we're actively trying to pursue a more long term solution. Um, and then uh, the water main transmission line for three years uh, would be about a million and twenty thousand dollar commitment. Um, and that's something that we're actively working on. That transmission line went down last week. Um, so it's very much a real problem, and um, we're really kind of scrambling to get the money together for that. So it's also worth, worth mentioning that uh, Mr. Crodo and I met with um, Congresswoman Trahan's staff at her Lowell office several weeks ago um, in an effort to try to line up additional funds for that as well, and they, they seemed pretty open to it. So we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah. Mr. Ward. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, on this Robertson Bridehurst request, I, I think I asked this last year. Again, I'll ask it again this year. Do we prioritize these when we send them in? Uh, that that um, is a good question. So yes, in terms of how they're prioritized, it kind of varies. It's, I'm trying to, to find a good word to phrase this, but it, it's not, the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation isn't quite as predictable um, as other funding sources are at times in that you're kind of at the mercy of that board and what they feel you know, is an, an important cause in town. Um, and so that, in that sense, we have to kind of pick our spots in terms of what we put forward and what we don't based partly on what we think based on their past awards that they're going to actually fund and what they're not going to fund. So when we submit this, we just sum submit it in block. Um, they come back to us usually in a couple, um, couple months or so. Um, you know, I'd say about probably around about March. Um, from there, they will come to my office and, and kind of ask like now that you, you've been through the capital planning process and you have a better idea or a better grasp on what's going to be moved forward at a town meeting like have you do you prioritize these in any way and I do provide input in that capacity I'm um, sorry this is a very long answer to a short, short yeah, well, question. the reason I'm asking is because yep. when we went to the meeting in April mm. for the Robinson Broadhurst folks I mean they, they were pretty open about 
this is not a good year for them financially as far as a good return on their investments. Mm -hmm. right. And from what I'm hearing, we're not going to get all this. It's not oh, going no. to happen. No, ab absolutely So not. my concern is that we get the things that we really feel are critical, mm -hmm. that really we want, and not just, you know, we get two benches, but we could have got something else that maybe affects a lot more people. Sure. Those types of things. Because I also hear that outside of town hall's request, the town of Winchenden has put in for about $1.3 million. So that's outside of this. this so all that right. into Winchenden is not going to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's an excellent point. So, so for example, that grand total of 2.3, it's partly, um, it's not terribly accurate because, like, for example, the water main transmission line, that might be over three or four years. Um, so it may be like 250 of that is baked into that number. Um, but your point just taken, and when they do come in, like, like flat out, I'll tell you, off the cuff right now, my priority is that water pipe. So flat out, that is, that is my top priority. Um, and, and so I think if anybody on the board, I mean, A, I would assume that you would all be relatively in agreement with that. Um, but if there are any other ones on this list, um, if you want to communicate through the chair or right now in this moment, um, please let me know and I'll, I'll bring that forward to them as well. But I, I think there's a few huh. on here that stand out as um, more immediate and pressing needs and some that are kind of nice to haves. Um, the nice to have ones are unique because we typically don't build that into our capital plan because we just can't afford it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other questions on that? Okay, so then um, thank you for that segue, um, or an aside, I should say. Um, it is the ninth. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> so um, just in general, a couple notes. My office has submitted an engagement letter to Roselli and Clark for the upcoming audit as recommended by the audit committee. Um, I've been working with my team to ensure that Mr. Roselli is able to provide his management letter in time for the upcoming tri-board meeting on the 17th. As a reminder, the February tax bill is due the first Monday in February. Uh, budget season is almost upon us and a draft schedule will be finalized and presented at your upcoming tri-board meeting. That'll carry us straight through to May. As referenced in a previous meeting, um, oh, the Robinson Broadhurst to see attached. We yep. just did it. There we go. Um, we have reposted the town accountant position. Um, thank you to Joanne Gogan for filling in in the interim capacity. And we are also negotiating the additional support of an outside accounting firm to assure, assure that we're covering all our bases. We'll be reviewing that in executive session this evening. Um, for project updates, uh, Old Murdoch is moving forward. Final street lights are being wired and we expect those to turn on soon. Two public forums are being held for the fire station design project and Chief Smith will be hosting a virtual session on Thursday, January 12th. I'll be present as well and an in-person review will be held just as a refresher as part of the tri-board meeting upcoming on January 17th. Um, I have been working closely with Representative Zlotnick to secure funding for executive town hall repairs as part of House Bill 4790, an act financing the general government infrastructure of the Commonwealth. Um, I anticipate you know, it wouldn't be a huge amount, maybe 200,000, but it would help kind of get the ball rolling on some of the exterior repairs we have to do. Um, I did receive an email over the weekend requesting a letter of support. So I haven't had a, an opportunity to draft one yet. Um, I'm gonna be drafting one on behalf of my office, but they did ask for one from the Board of Selectmen as well. So um, if the board would, I guess, I suppose would be willing to authorize the chair to sign on their behalf um, in support of seeking those funds. Are you open to doing that? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, both aye. Thank you, so I'll have that ready for you sometime later this week. Just let me know. Yep. I will, thank you. Um, miscellaneous, a citizen has made our team aware of some deficiencies under the Maple Street Bridge. You may have seen pictures circulating on social media. So that's a, a state-owned asset. It's inspected regularly. They did confirm that they feel it's safe. Um, however, we've asked the state to provide an action plan for repairs. And thank you to Mr. Croto um, for following up on that. Um, as reported, there was a substantial break on our main water transmission line from Ashburnham. This needed, uh, or this resulted in the need to switch over to emergency tanks, and that tank was drawn down pretty considerably. Um, I, I would say, honestly, we were within about a half hour of putting out uh, reverse 911, asking people to, to kind of throttle their water usage. So um, I just want to thank uh, the man behind me, but also the entire 
um, DPW team for, you know, I, I don't want to be in a hole um, up, you know, up to my thighs in water in early January. Um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, the folks at the DPW know that we see the work they do and we appreciate it. Um, they, you know, they kept the water on. It's a, a very basic need. You don't see them doing the work, um, but they were out there doing it, so thank you. Um, and as, December, as of December 2nd, I have submitted my annual review to the Board of Selectmen. It's a four-page self-assessment, um, which you should have received, and I look forward to feedback from the Board and general public at your upcoming meeting. And then, um, just lastly, hot off the presses, we received official news today that the, um, the omnibus bill that President Biden signed on December 29th um, included appropriations to support Ukraine, but it also included an appropriation to support um, the town of Winchenden and that we secured um, a, a grant. We were one of 10 communities out of 37 communities um, in the third congressional district. We received $494,000 to replace 900 feet of old sewer and water pipe north of Central. Nice. So um, that one is from DC itself. So helps to be a squeaky wheel. Um, yeah, yep, it's it it pretty good. Trahan, right? Lily Trahan. Yep, that was uh, Congresswoman Trahan. Special thank you, thank you to her and her staff. Um, she did come down and visit at Fall Fest. Um, I want to thank also as well uh, Mr. Croto, who um, you know I, I don't know much about water pipes. So when it comes to providing the scope for that, that was all Brian. So thank you. Um, excellent work, team effort. Um, Sure, and, right. So um, the other communities that received funding were Lowell, Haverhill, Lawrence, Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, and Winchenden. So we're, we're punching above our weight there. So. Nice. Um, and that is everything, thank you. Any questions, comments on the town manager's report? Oh, sorry, any questions, comments on the town manager's report? Thank you. Um, we have two sets of minutes this evening. The first is November 28th, 2022. I'll take a moment for any revisions, and then I will entertain a motion. I will move to approve. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, actually, Danielle, you were absent that day. So if oh, I could I was ask you to at abstain, the wrong one please. First. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, no abstain. problem. All right, it does pass. Three, one, and then we have our minutes of December nineteenth, twenty twenty-two, at which I was absent. I make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And I will abstain. Our next regular meeting is the 20, pardon me, uh, the 23rd. Um, we do have an executive session this evening. And Madam Chair, I'd also note you have your tri-board meeting on the 17th. Thank you, yes. I heard you say something, but I Seven, ignored you. Uh, tri-board is... Uh, for all of you, seven. Seven, <laughs> nice. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. So that is our tri board on Tuesday the 17th, which begins at 7 p.m. And then our next regular meeting is on the 23rd, Monday the 23rd at 6.30. Thank you for catching that, gentlemen. Okay. Now we do have an executive session this evening. Uh, under Mass General Law, Chapter, th I move that we open, go into executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, town accountant search discussion, and we will reconvene in open session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Roll call vote, Mrs. Salter? Aye. Mr. Ward? Aye. Mrs. LaPointe? Aye. And Chair votes aye. We are in executive session. Thank you.